track at the National Speedway Stadium for tonight's British final. Um, this is a young speedway track. It's a big, fast speedway track. But we have already seen some wonderful action here in the short period of time that this stadium has been open. I want to get across to you straight away how big and fast this track really is. As Ivor, the cameraman, now just is able to pan around in front of me. You can see the width and the length of this first corner that we're now in the middle of. And also the expanse of the straight down that back straight. And I can assure you, you are carrying plenty of speed by the time you get down there. And speed is what it's all about here in Manchester. No doubt about it. These corners are long. You've got to carry the momentum. You have to carry the speed through here. Otherwise, you're going to find it very difficult indeed. Plenty of dirt. Lots of water on the track. That's going to create lots of racing lines. And there's no doubt that we are going to be in for a thriller here this evening. Welcome back to the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester, which tonight hosts the 57th British final. The fans here have been pouring through the turnstiles since around 5 o'clock this evening. I've seen plenty of Bellevue Aces flags, as you would expect, but a Workington Comets cap as well. And they've come from far and wide. They can't wait to watch the Battle of the Brits. And we can't wait either. So let's head over to our commentators, Calvin Tatum and first, Nigel Pearson. Natalie, thank you. Good evening, everybody. A terrific atmosphere here at this magnificent purpose-built Speedway Stadium. The National Speedway Stadium here in Manchester, the home of the Bellevue Aces. And for the second successive year, this stadium hosts this prestigious national title. Who is going to be British champion? Will Danny King defend his crown? Who will be the wild card for Cardiff? Danny King, who took a knock over the weekend and actually missed out for Leicester on Saturday night in their home meeting ironically with Bellevue there's one or two injuries going into this meeting King's one of them and also I can tell you Stevie Waddle home Bellevue favorite is struggling with a wrist injury as well Kelvin Tatum MBE alongside me twice British champion you've already uh, seen his views on the circuit here but a nice atmosphere perfect weather Kelvin it is all set up beautifully isn't it indeed it is and uh, it's just cooled off just a touch it's been a beautiful day it's been a beautiful day throughout the British Isles in truth and uh, we are set fair for an action-packed night of Speedway here in the National Speedway Stadium. Second time we've been back here for the British final. It was quite an extraordinary night of Speedway 12 months ago when it was pouring with rain and Danny King came through with flying colours that night. But uh, I'm sure there's the champion. Uh, he has had an indifferent start, but he's found some form in recent weeks, but uh, just a niggling injury coming into tonight. Take a look across the grid then, it's Carl Wilkinson off the inside. Danny King, the reigning champion, goes off gate number two. Blue rights for the Leicester Lions in the Premiership, also doubles up with Ipswich Witches in the Championship. Ben Barker, a replacement for Lewis Bridger, who's injured, goes off gate three. And Jason Garrity, he's had a, a, a hand problem as well going into this meeting. He goes off the outside gate in yellow. King, the reigning champion, as I say, missed the weekend, had intensive physio all day yesterday on Father's Day. Uh, had that physio session to get himself ready for tonight. Kelvin Danny King quoted yesterday, I know, uh, nothing will stop me riding at the British final. No, he's prepared to ride through the pain barrier, and you can understand why, as the reigning champion, he is determined to hang on to it. He also wants to go to Cardiff as the wild card, and that's the winner here this evening. Stepping down to number one. Jim McGregor is our referee here in Manchester tonight. The first piece of water start that is from Ben Barker. It is an absolute jet propelled getaway. I just wondered if it was too quick, but the referee has let it continue. Second place in blue here is Danny King. And this man up front, Ben Barker, only came in on Thursday as he replaced the injured Lewis Bridger. Now King's coming on strong. He's right up his exhaust pipe. Third is Garrity. Wilkinson is at the back. Now down the back straight. King's going to wind it on, Cal. He is indeed. Brilliant start from Barker. I think a lot of referees would have put the red light on there. It looked like he may have to start a little bit but he's got away with it and he's riding a real stormer here king doesn't show any ill effects of injury there in second place guarantee who i spoke to prior to the meeting was really fired up wilkinson out the back a lap to go ben barker looking good out in front here yeah, Barker, an experienced rider now from Cornwall, rides for the Red Cup Bears up in Teesside this year. Into turn three and four for the final time. He's going to make it pay with that jet-propelled start. Three big points for Ben Barker in white. Former Great Britain world.
World Cup rider as well, Ben Barker. He's got plenty of experience under his belt. Danny King, the reigning champion, settling for second spot there. Mm. And third was Jason Garrity. But yes, I must admit, Kelv, I looked at that start, and I do agree some referees would have pulled that back. But on this instance, Jim McGregor quite happy for the race well, to go and yeah. some drama at the end of the race for Barker. Well, maybe but, a touch fortunate in two accounts yep. there with the start <laughs> and the fact that uh, there seems to be an issue with the bike as it's come to a halt on the back straight. Yep, Ben Barker the winner with Danny King second, Jason Garrity was third and Carl Wilkinson trailed at the back. So two points for the reigning champion, but Ben Barker starts with a win and showing a nice turn of speed on his way back to the pits as well. Here's the start, Kelv. Here we see it again, and Ooh. he is early, and uh, I think he did just anticipate a touch, and quite a lot of referees would there. You see he drops the clutch clearly earlier than everybody else, so he didn't wait until the tapes had gone. He just gambled a little bit, and his gamble pays off because he picks up a vital three points in the opening race. As the bike comes uh, to rest, actually, on the back straight, he has some sort of mechanical issue, so a touch fortunate to complete the four laps, but he's all action, Ben Barker. Look at that. He's hanging off the back of the bike, really giving it everything. He's a 100% try. You can never doubt that with him. He's had his injury problems in, uh, in his career, but uh, the ideal way to start. Touch fortunate, but three points nonetheless. Fair old character, Ben Barker, uh, spectacular rider. And I know he was absolutely delighted to get called up here to the national championship tonight, coming in uh, as that replacement for Lewis Bridger, who we wish all the very best, of course, for his recovery, the Berwick man. This is Chris Harris, yellow and black helmet colour, three times British champion, rides for Rye House, doubles up with Peterborough in the championship as well. A lot of these riders riding for two clubs in the UK yeah. in uh, 2017. And Calf, can you believe, 10 years since this man won the British Grand Prix at Cardiff in one of the most amazing grand finals we've seen. Well, I will never forget it. It was uh, truly an extraordinary race, an extraordinary night of speedway that Chris Harris managed to come out on top. Never made a start all night, but somehow managed his uh, way to steal the win away from Hancock coming out of the last corner. I've got to say, the move to Rye House seems to have reinvigorated uh, Chris Harris this year. He's riding well. He has uh, been piling on the points for his new team. He now rides for the Peterborough Panthers, and that keeps him very busy. And you've got to believe he'll go close tonight. That man there, of course, Nichols, uh, hugely successful in this meeting, seven times a winner. Incredible. He had a former Bellevue rider, Scott Nichols, who uh, makes his return to the National Stadium tonight. Here's your lineup for Heat 2. Lewis Rose goes off the inside in red. Lewis Kerr. Goes off gate number two in blue. Kyle Howarth, who is from Staley Bridge, actually, literally just down the road from this stadium, but has never actually ridden for Bellevue. He rides Wolves, rides for Sheffield, and it's Chris Harris, the man we've just been focusing on. He goes off the outside in yellow. Yeah, just a word about Kyle Howarth. He's enjoying a good season. It's his second term with the Wolverhampton Wolves, and I think that's paying dividends. He's got a nice blend of a big fast track at Sheffield and a tighter one at Wolves, and I think it's doing him the power of good. And uh, I've been watching his scores with interest, you know, Nigel, because uh, I think uh, he's a rider that's actually been riding really well this year. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if he does well here tonight. Josh Krasonic in his pit corner here this evening as well. Here we go, heat number two. Lewis going to be first. Lewis Crowe's made a good one off gate number two, but so has the man in the red helmet colour with Lewis Rose. He has the advantage early on, and Harris, the former champion, is at the back, would you believe? The lead here is with Lewis Rose. Fantastic stuff from him so far. Second place in white is Kyle Howard. Harris coming around the outside of Lewis Kerr now, challenging for third place. Harris has got him. Now he's chasing hard after Kyle oh. Howard. Down the back straight. Harris working hard in the yellow and black helmet colour. Tries the inside run and has done Kyle Howard. Well, all action from Chris Harris there. He didn't make a very good getaway from gate four, but he's worked hard, awfully hard, and he's really charged into second place. Round the outside of Louis Kerr. And up the inside now Harris. And now he's got Louis Rose in his sights. It's just under a lap to go. The former British champion's riding a stormer. He is indeed, but we're into turns three and four. One last swoop for Chris Harris. Rose holds the line intelligently. Nice move from Louis Rose. Under pressure from Chris Harris. You just do feel one more lap.
that. <laughs> and maybe Harris would have gone from last to first. As it was, he had to settle from last to second. And what a ride from Lewis Rose in his debut yeah. in the British final. A fantastic ride from Lewis Rose, former motocross rider. And that is a moment he will remember for the rest of his life. Brilliant ride from Lewis Rose. He uh, had a great start from the inside. There was plenty of grip on the inside of the track early doors, and I've got to say that he used that brilliantly. He came under pressure late on uh, with a great charge through the traffic by Chris Harris, but as you rightly say, he will remember that for an awful long time, Lewis Rose. He will indeed. Rose the winner with Chris Harris in second place. Kyle Howarth was third, and Lewis Kerr trailing at the back. But that was a good ride from Harris, going from last to second. He wasted no time in making up that ground. No. But what a ride from Lewis Rose as well. We're looking at Harris from the outside. He doesn't get away. It's a long way from there, in truth, and they all get there very level. Uh, Louis Kerr gets a bit of a shove there from Lewis Rose, who just drifts off the line, and Howarth is through into second place. Lewis Kerr there looking for room, but just has to come off the throttle. Again from the tapes. It's on the inside. The two boys on gates one and two hustle it to the first turn, and, and uh, Rose just gives Kerr a shove, and that throws him wide, and that allows Carl Howarth through. Look at Harris at this early stage of the race. He's at the back. He then makes short work of Louis Kerr around the outside of him. He then challenges hard with Harris. Harris then tries to move outside. And you've got to say that it was a textbook move there from Chris Harris because he read it beautifully and was able to chop back to the inside. Around the outside of Kerr, up the inside of Harris, and he very nearly got to Rose. That was an encouraging ride from Harris. Yeah, super ride from Chris Harris, but what about Lewis Rose? That race belonged to him. Yeah. Marvellous moment for Rose. Rides in his King's Lynn race suit there tonight. His promoter at the Adrian Flux Arena, Keith Chapman, the chairman of British Speedway, is here tonight supporting his man, as is Newcastle promoter George English. He's here. A lot of club bosses here tonight. I've seen yeah, uh, Rob Godfrey. He Rob is Godfrey here from, from Scunthorpe, yeah. Uh, Debbie Hancock from the Somerset Rebels is here with her team manager, Gary May. Don't forget anybody. I'll try not to. Um, uh, they're all here, and they're all in it. And, uh, Matt Ford from Paul. We've Matt seen Ford, that. that's good Long news. way from Paul as well. It is indeed. But a um, good couple of races to start this event. There's no doubt that um, Ben Barker was exciting in Heat 1, and Chris Harris pushed Lewis Rose hard on that last lap, but a good confidence-boosting ride uh, for Lewis Rose. I can tell you as well, by the way, that uh, we are down at Pool next Monday in the Premiership. Uh, it's going to be a terrific night down there at Wimborne Road next Monday night. Live with us, hope you can join us. And uh, if you want to go along to the action at Wimborne Road, do get along there. And uh, under 11s go for free. So uh, special promotion there next Monday for the uh, Premiership down at Wimborne Road in Poole. And this, by the way, tonight, the start of a long, long run of Monday night speedway for you. We've got the Grand Prix in Horsens this Saturday in Denmark, and uh, that's nicely poised as well, the World Championship. This is the British Championship. Richard Lawson, Paul Stark, Stevie Worrell, and Stuart Robson. And Worrell, by the way, going off gate number three in white, knows every inch of this track. He's a specialist around here, but significantly worries over Stevie Worrell's scaphoid right now, Kel. Not ideal preparation, of course not, but you're dead right. He is a specialist at this track, and I saw him on several occasions last season, and he was outstanding. He really did um, uh, generate a lot of speed, and he was almost out of the sport a year or two ago, you know, and coming here has revitalized him, and he's grown in stature throughout the last season and a half. Richie Worrell, Richard, excuse me, his brother is here as well, but Richard Lawson, excuse me, on the inside, a rider that's underrated, looking for a big night. Yep, here we go. Number three of the British final. Take flies. It's a nervy start, but Waller has got a good start there. But it's Lawson who has the lead early on. Richard Lawson of the Glasgow Whoa. Tigers and the Somerset Rebels have that lead, and he's really got some speed on. Second place is Stevie Worrell in white, charging hard up the inside in yellow and black. Is Stuart Lawson and a real go on full start here. But the lead is with Richard Lawson, rides for the Glasgow Tigers. Members of the Glasgow management are here tonight, supporting him as well as the Somerset Rebels. He is looking super quick here tonight. And he's got a point to prove. He's the rider that wanted to be part of the World Cup squad, has been overlooked by Alan Rossiter, the team manager. And he's out there in front. He made a super start from the inside and is showing great speed. Um, Warren in second place will be pleased with this. You know, it'll be a little bit nervous about that 
skateboard injury, but he's riding steadily there in second place. Stark in third, Robson out the back. But Richard Lawson has dominated this race. Well, he is looking so, so determined here. Richard Lawson takes the chequered flag. Second place in white there, Stevie Worrell. Third in blue, Paul Stark. And the man at the back there was Stuart Robson. But what can you say? Richard Lawson... I agree with you, Kelvin. It appears he's got a point to prove tonight after being left out of the preliminary Great Britain World Cup squad for the campaign, which gets underway in just over, or just under two weeks' time. But Richard Lawson, who comes from a speedway background, of course, his father, Stevie Lawson, was a fantastic rider, and he really is lapping up the applause of this crowd. Yeah, good ride, that. Tremendous. And Stevie Worrell getting second place with Paul Stark. Hanging on for third, just to confirm the result for you then. Lawson, Worrell, Stark and Robson is your finishing order. A reminder for the British Championship, the top two scorers after 20 heats go straight through to the final and the next four go into a one-off race-off to try and reach the final. Three points for a win, two for second, one for third and nothing for finishing last. And this man got three of them because he makes a super start. It's tight as I get to the first corner, but uh, it's uh, Lawson that makes it his. It gets really tight coming off the first corner and Stuart Robson is the meat in the sandwich there. Has to shut the throttle off because Worrell and Stark really do poo put a lot of pressure on him. But Richard Lawson, this would be exactly what he was looking for. I've got to say, the bike set up was spot on. Look how tight that was as they came out of the first corner on the opening lap. But uh, Lawson out in front, clean as a whistle, shows a clean pair of heels to the opposition in heat number three. And he comes in tonight with a point to prove, and he started in fine fashion. Yes, and uh, you, uh, Ryder, you know well, Kelvin, because uh, yeah. when Lakeside were in the top flight last year, you worked with him, of course, so you know Richard Lawson pretty well. Super guy, you know. Um, he is uh, as honest as the day is long, always gives his best. He has the occasional hiccup here and there, but uh, generally he is a very consistent performer. And uh, I think he's a rider that hasn't always um, fulfilled his potential, but um, he's a rider that can certainly... Um, uh, he could... It could cause a surprise here tonight. Heat number four, Nige. This is uh, this is a strong lineup here. Yep, it certainly is. You have uh, Craig Cook, who actually won the Grand Prix qualifier on Saturday night in Terenzano, Italy, and he was up against some fantastic riders like Matti Zegar, the World Championship leader, Patrick Dudek. He beat Dudek, and he won the meeting in Terenzano which means that Craig Cook is now five rides away from becoming a Grand Prix rider on a full-time basis. Is, it's a great effort, and Terenzano, you and I have been there on several occasions, Nigel. That is no easy task. It's quite a one-off type of track. It's very fast, it's flat, unusual surface. So for Cook to go there, that was an outstanding uh, achievement. Rory Schlein in here, the Australian riding with an ACU license, so he is actually classified as a British rider here tonight. And could we see him go through and win the championship this evening? Would be quite a story, that. But Scotty Nichols on the inside, of course, rode here last year, seven times a champion. Will be very keen to make it eight. Nichols off the inside, Cook goes off gate number two. Schlein is off gate three, debut British final. Richie Waddle, former Bellevue rider, thought that he was a shoe in for a place here during the winter, whilst the immediate future of the club was uh, sorted out. Richie Worrell was holding out the hopes that he would be here, but he wasn't called into the Bellevue side. Who are we to question? No, Bellevue have had a fantastic season so far on the whole in the Premiership. Even before, what a lineup this one is. Great drives and great folks have played a good start from gate number two. Cook is off and running, charging hard around the outside. And oh, it's tight down the back straight, but in second now, Richie Worrell is there. Third is Scott Nichols and Rory Schlein is at the back, but look at Craig Cook go. Nichols now charging hard, for pressure on Richie Worrell. But Cook is looking extremely stylish here as Nichols charges through into second spot right now. Yeah, lovely move there from Scott Nichols riding the tight line there. Made it work. He's now moved off the line. Can Worrell really play the compliment? Rory Schlein coming into it as well. Awfully tied out the back. Cook's in a class of his own here. What a start from gate number two. And look at the speed of the Bellevue man flying out in front. Nichols worked hard for that second place and deserves it. Worrell back in third, but Cook, he is loving it out in front. Really relishing the bike. Look at that. Body language on the bike is perfect. Absolutely flying. He's going to take some stopping time. It's Craig Cook, the Cumbrian, right to Bellevue. And you can hear the roar of the crowd. Nichols
still second. Third place was Richie Waddle and Rory Schlein at the back, but that is a popular win. This Bellevue crowd delighted with that. There's a few from Workington that have made the journey down from Cumbria as well. Seen the Workington team manager, Tony Jackson, uh, down in the pits a little bit earlier as well. Ooh. And Craig Cook, well, he ominous. is in the form of his career. Kelvin. He is indeed, Nigel. You've spot on there, and that's ominous for the rest of the opposition here. That was quite, quite a devastating ride and a statement of intent, I would suggest. He made an excellent start from gate number two and had dynamic speed out in front. Cook the winner with Scott Nichols in second spot. Richie Waddle was third and Rory Schlein at the back. All the hard work done from the start here from Craig Cook. Many people's pre-meeting favourite and this is the reason why. And never easy to live up to that. That, that heaps extra pressure on you, but... Uh, he, uh, he makes light of that because in his opening right here, he makes a terrific start. Plenty of action out the back here with Rory Schlein squeezed out of it on the opening lap with Nichols coming through into third place. Again from the tapes, it's all about Cook. Cook then clears off out in front and has a trouble-free run. Wall around the outside initially and Scotty Nichols is there just having to work very hard to get the better of the uh, Rory Schlein down the back straight. But for Cook, I think that's the sort of form that uh, we can expect from him this evening. Yeah, super ride then from Craig Cook. We've had four heats of this Integro British Speedway Championship final here in Manchester. Craig Cook off to a great start. Join us for reaction and heat number five when we come back in a few moments. Welcome back to a glorious night here in the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. Four heats down in the British final. The winner of heat number three was Richard Lawson and he's speaking to Steve Brandon. Richard, great start to the night and great speed in Heat 3. Yeah, it was uh, nice to get away with, uh, with a win. Uh, gate 1 was looking good, so nice to take advantage of that. No Premiership club to start the season, but you've joined Somerset now. A lot busier. How much does that help? More time on a bike for a rider to be race-tuned at this time? Yeah, absolutely. It helps out a lot. You know, um, I'm loving it at Somerset. Great club, great promotion. and uh, Yeah, it's helped me out a lot. Getting Riding twice a week, three times a week is much better for me. And it's a pretty special prize tonight, not just being British champion, but a chance to ride at Cardiff. That'd be a real special part of the career. Yeah, that's a bit of a dream, but uh, you know, I'll just try and keep my feet on the ground and uh, concentrate on tonight and, and see what happens. All right. Thanks, Richard. Good luck with the rest of the night. Kelvin, Nigel, back to you. Good crowd here tonight. Really uh, good to see. It's a beautiful day, of course. Um, tropical heat throughout the day here in Manchester. <laughs> and uh, you say that here. with some sort of surprise in your voice. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's great to be here. This is the, uh, the, third, the third Speedway venue in Manchester that I've been to. I mm. recall the old Hyde Road days, away to our right from yeah, where we were sat, and away to our left, the old Kirkman Team Lane days. But this now the National Speedway Stadium here, which um, they are looking to use more and more. I know there's American football and um, uh, football and rugby league being used on the infield. Um, the uh, 3G surface here, um, and certainly the Speedway track is the primary use. They have the, the Bellevue Aces, and of course they have the Bellevue Colts, which is their young side in the um, Travel Plus National League, the third tier of British Speedway. They've got some really great youngsters coming through in Dan Bewley and Jack Smith. Jack Smith's one of the reserves tonight. Um, they've got Andy Mellish, they have Carl Rob Bickley. Shuttleworth, they have these riders. Carl Bickley as well. Carl Bickley, yeah. the uh, young multi-world champion at schoolboy level as well, which is great to see in the Bellevue Colts. Right now, heat number five of the British Championship final, and Richie Waddle goes off the inside in red. Carl Wilkinson, gate number two. Lewis Rose, winner first time out, and very convincing as well. He goes off gate three, and Stevie Worrell, carrying that wrist injury, he goes off the outside in the yellow helmet colour. Yeah, good lineup, and uh, the two brothers are going to go head-to-head. -head. Plenty of work going on in the pit still um, uh, once or twice uh, just changing the gearing there on the bike in the distance there just as tra track conditions change they're obviously altering to adjust to that Worrell's on the inside and the outside here Richie on the inside and Stevie's brother on the outside must be slightly awkward going head to head with your brother in an individual event when it's uh, every man for himself but uh, they will be reasonably accustomed to that it won't be the first time it's happened probably not the last either but uh, there's no doubt steve worrell will be looking for another big ride here mark lemon who is the director of speedway here at bellevue uh, team manager of the uh, premiership side and they've been overall charge of the uh, speedway teams here in Manchester. number five it is then in the 
British Championship final. Now it's a good start from Warren on the outside, but which one will emerge here? Down the outside we go. It's a oh. super start from Stevie Warren down the back straight. Wonderful move it is from Steve Warren to get the better of his brother Richie. Now Lewis Rose coming hard on the charge as well. Rose has got speed under pressure from Wilkinson, but look at this ride from Steve Warrell, who is carrying a wrist injury. You wouldn't know it. He's going quicker than a plane coming into Manchester Airport. He is indeed absolutely flying out his run and putting away, once again showing this ability he has here. Look how he carries the speed. He's hardly turning the bike, and he has already stretched half the length of the straightaway. Fabulous ride from Steve Worrell out in front. His brother's hanging on, and Lewis Rose is looking for a way past in second and third place. Worrell out in front, Steve, that is, has absolutely cleared off. Look at Lewis Rose here. Oh. Rose in white going round the outside. This is the second spot. Richie Worrell holds the inside line. Steve Worrell's won it. Richie Worrell gets second. And third goes to Lewis Rose with Carl Wilkinson finding life tough tonight. He's at the back, but that was a super ride from Steve Worrell. What a start, and he did, really did well, have to work hard around the outside and use the banking to perfection, Kel. Absolutely. That's, that was what the key to the move. He was able to keep the bike in line, the wheels in line in that first corner on the edge of the grip. His brother gave him just enough racing room as they came off the first corner. And by crikey, did he generate some speed. Brilliant ride from Worrell. Steve Worrell, the winner with Richie Worrell second. Lewis Rose was third. Carl Wilkinson trailed in at the back. Rose really did put Richie Worrell under some severe pressure there late on it does now mean that Stevie Worrell is on five points from two rides Lewis Rose is on four you're really gonna need to get nine or ten points under your belt if you are gonna get through to the latter stages of this championship tonight well, here we see it again Steve Worrell coming a charging across from the outside his brother there moves out to mid-track but not far enough he could not resist that move from his brother Steve and once again clutching it away really determined to get to the first corner Steve Worrell yellow helmet color and he's right in the grip there the bike digs in and powers down the back straight terrific ride one of the secrets i believe he's found here is he sits very quiet on the bike and that allows it to generate more and more pace lewis rose rides a really strong race in third place here and it's a good scrap for second place between richie worrell and lewis rose back in third place and richie worrell hanging on for second place but that man there steve worrell very impressive indeed really quick out in front well, when I looked at the race card uh, earlier in the day today, doing a bit of uh, preparation for tonight's action, heat number six, which is coming up now, was one of the races that I looked at straight away and thought that could be a big one. The lineup for heat number six is tasty to say the least. We have Craig Cook, who's in the form of his career right now, a superb winner in his opening ride. He's got the inside gate. Uh, we've got Richard Lawson, who was a winner as well in his opener. Danny King, the reigning champion here, is off gate three in white, and Kyle Howarth going off the outside in yellow it's uh, it's a decent line of this one kill tasty is the right word this is a tough one and uh, something's going to give but uh, there's no doubt that all these four riders are going to be um, really going for it a bit of ignition timing change there for carl howarth last moment just to tweak that not quite sure maybe they've just advanced it a touch just to get a little bit more power into the engine that rider there that person there helping him out who's just on his knees he's just grisonic he's just walking away now yeah the aussie boy who yeah. rides for sheffield and the somerset rebels in the uh, championship and the premiership respectively having a decent good season rider. Yeah, very good rider in actual fact another rider that i don't think has quite fulfilled his potential but a class act yep. nonetheless and this is a class race very difficult to know which way it's going to go the favorite for me has to be cook on the inside but uh, king beat him last year or one of lois colors right from the word go cook lawson king howarth is the order across the grid here howarth the local lad off the outside gate but remarkably even though he's from staley bridge has never ridden for bellevue i had a bit of a laugh and a joke with him about that earlier um, he is uh, using uh, one of grisonic's uh, engines as well josh here big pals with carl howarth and uh, more than happy to help him out. Here we go, big race. He's number six of the British Championship. Which way will this dog go? Can anybody stop? Race the oh. inside Well, Cook has been left, but then again, the red lights are on straight away. Well, Howarth made a jump yes, there. Yes, he did. And that's a little bit of inconsistency there from the referee. Let Ben Barker get away with one, but doesn't allow Carl Howarth. Um, that's the right decision though that is the right decision it's a long way from gate four we'll see it again what well, keep your eyes on gate four 
moves early and definitely anticipated the start. He knows that this is a huge race. Ooh. You can see how just drops the clutch a fraction early and he needs to try, he's desperate to try, yeah, just, he drops the clutch before the tapes have gone, so the right call from the ref. Yeah, so more work going on with uh, Kyle Howarth's equipment here and uh, three of the riders. Uh, Danny King is up at tapes. I there is an official warning for Kyle Howarth now from Jim McGregor, our referee here tonight. We do see in the re, uh, World Championship now where they do have an official warning where it's actually then displayed on their number, on their race board, and it stays with them all night. And they do it again, they will be excluded. Obviously, that isn't quite an official rule in British Speedway yet. It may become so because it has proven to be quite successful in the Grand Prix so far. But I think it was an indication for Howarth Nige that, you know, you look at the quality of the riders on gates one, two and three. I just suggest that was putting a little bit of extra pressure on the boy and he was desperate to get away to a flyer. Yeah, it's a real tough, demanding meeting, this one. Lots of passion and commitment from the riders. We've had five races here at Bellevue. If you have just joined us in the Integro British Championship final for 2017, Stevie Worrell, five out of six so far. This man, a winner in his opening ride, Richard Lawson in the blue helmet colour. All riders up at takes now. We're ready for the restart. Second time of asking then here for this heat number six. Craig Cook off the inside. Richard Lawson, gate two. Danny King, gate three. Kyle Howarth going off the outside gate. Perfect conditions here tonight. Track's uh, looking pretty good as well, Kelf, so far. Track curator Andy Meredith has done a great job. He started watering yesterday afternoon, and uh, it was pretty much right up until the first race that he had to keep plowing the water on. Really does look a picture of the track. It's just clouded over a little bit, and that's helped him out a little bit, but uh, no, no doubt that racing conditions are fair for all. They certainly are. A little bit of tension there at the start line, you feel, with uh, riders taking their time to settle down. Right, here we go, heat number six, second time of asking. Turn. Cook has got there. Watch out for King up the inside. Now you would expect a battle between Lawson and Cook. Lawson's coming up strong around the outside. Lawson's got speed. Cook's going to take him wide. King's going to battle hard. Howard up the inside as well. What a race here. Three riders charging into lap two. Lawson from the man in the yellow and black helmet, Colour Howard. And here comes Cook again. What a race. And Cook charging hard. Kyle Howarth was third, Danny King at the back, and that was a super, super speedway race here in Manchester. And Craig Cook knew he had to work overtime for that. Well, he knows he's been in a race, that's for sure, because Richard Lawson made him work awfully hard for that. Proper speedway there, proper speedway. Brilliant action out in front between the two boys. Richard Lawson riding a stormer, but uh, there's no doubt Cook just had the speed. Very much so. The result, Cook, Lawson, Howarth and King, and that means that Cook is now on six points out of six. Unbeaten so far. But let me just remind you about the British Championship. You get through to the final, it all boils down to one race, around a minute's worth of action to decide the title. It does indeed. Initially off the inside, Craig Cook makes it, but then uh, out of gate two, Richard Lawson just gets that extra little bit of drive off turn two that enables him to get to the front. He's pushed hard by Cook. Cook drifting off the line but that allows Lawson to get into the grip and he just about gets himself to the front as they complete the first lap then Cook now coming under pressure from Carl Howarth that's putting added pressure on the home rider Carl Howarth there look at him he's now in momentarily into second place it really was all action packed for the first lap and a half for second and second and third but now Cook now begins to wind it on. He elects then chooses to go to the inside because Lawson's decided that the middle of the track's going to be the fastest way. How close it is. High speed, top action. But Cook now gets himself through to the front. He's established his authority late in the race. 
and picks his uh, picks up his second win of the evening so far but that really was a super race and uh, once again the national speedway stadium serving up some fantastic action certainly is what a race that was and um it happens quite regularly around here. They've had some great speedway here in Manchester so far this season. Craig Cook, two rides, two wins. Of course, last season Bellevue went agonizingly close to the top flight title in their first season here in the new stadium. But Wolverhampton Wolves came here and conquered them last October in a breathtaking, dramatic grand final. And I'm sure we're in for plenty more of the same in the Premiership and the Championship throughout the course of the rest of this season and indeed the National League as well. Paul Stark off the inside, Scotty Nichols, gate two in blue, Lewis Kerr, gate three white, Ben Barker won his opening ride, he's off the outside gate here in the yellow helmet colour. Well, the big guns have been firing so far, Kelv, as we expected. Yeah, certainly Craig Cook has, and uh, Danny King will be disappointed with that last ride, he uh, failed to score. He's got opportunities, of course, to bounce back, and so is that man on screen, Rory Schlein. He failed to score in his opening ride. Uh, Scott Nichols had to work hard for his two points. He um, uh, came through the traffic and uh, picked up a useful second place. Ben Barker, this time from the outside, he had gate three, and uh, we all probably sense he got away with a bit of a flyer. Interesting to see if he sits still this time. Yep, here we go then. It's number seven, uh, take five, and they are away. Cam Nichols get into that first turn. Stark's going to try and take him wide. That is about the gap up the inside for Lewis Kerr. Three of best down the back straight, and that was super from Scott Nichols. And now charging hard in the yellow helmet as well. Ben Barker comes up the inside into third place. It's Nichols, Stark, Barker. That's the order right now. Lewis Kerr at the back, and this is much more like the Scott Nichols we know here. A quality, quality rider. Got Grand Prix experience, seven times. British champion and looking much more like it around this Bellevue track tonight. Nichols through that first corner really did make it his own and he got the speed down the back straight. I've got to say Paul Stark's there with him. Both of those two boys have pulled away. Ben Barker back in third and Louis Kerr out the back. But Nichols, after a hard fought second place, he's dominating his second right here and he's looking good. Looking good out in front. Battle at the back as well here with Kerr charged up the inside into turns three and four it's very very close every point absolutely competitive Barker battling away the win is with Nichols super right from him Paul Stark second and third in yellow and black was Ben Barker uh, but that was a good effort by Scott Nichols you know he's still he's still on his day he's a class class performer great signing for Rye House and let's say hats off to Rye House they got uh, the uh, promotion up into the premiership during the winter the Rye House Rockets down at Hoddesdon We'll be there, of course, with our cameras later this year. And they are getting big crowds there at Hoddesdon. Rye House has been a big success. Well done to them for that. Nichols, Stark, Barker, and Kerr. Stark made a decent start, but Scott Nichols came through, and it was a, it was a good ride by Nichols, Kel. Indeed it was, and initially on the inside here, Paul Stark is level with uh, Scotty Nichols. He does push him hard but effectively pushes him up the banking and they actually then allows Nichols to get his back tire in the middle of the middle of the turn here and there's plenty of grip there you can see the bike just lifting momentarily underneath him and he's able to get the better of the opposition as they charge down the back straight on the opening lap Paul Stark rides strongly in second place but Nichols five points from two rides that's a very useful start indeed and there's no doubt that uh, Scott always raises his game for this particular meeting. He looks very focused and is always very keen to do well. But that was an excellent ride there from gate number two, and he'll be tough with that. And I'm sure we'll be enjoying getting Scotty's views this weekend on the Grand Prix as well, as uh, Scott and Natalie analyse the Grand Prix in Horsens in Denmark, uh, which is coming up on Saturday night in the uh, Casa Arena football stadium there, where the... Uh, Football surface gets replaced by a speedway track in uh, Denmark. We've had two good years there in Horsens, and we're back again this Saturday night uh, in what is a brilliant world championship so far. It is indeed, and uh, the football stadium 
doubles up as a speedway venue very nicely in truth in horses the track is already in it uh, doesn't have a roof so they do put the track in slightly earlier there I'm, I'm told it's good for pop concerts as well Calv. I'm told oh multi-purpose facility then oh, terrific yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff we all to go yeah um, uh, yeah let's, ma let's make plans but, but Springsteen maybe yeah yeah love it but um, no it's uh, it's a great new venue and it's a modern day stadium with great facilities and there's certainly certainly um, uh, plenty of speedway to be seen there Rory Schlein now is out here failed to score in his opening ride and uh, he will be disappointed with that and he's got gate four not easy from there but he'll be desperate to get amongst the points this time yep here we go with gate number eight there it's Jason Garrity off the inside gate number two is Chris Harris former British champion Stuart Robson gate three another right house rider here tonight and Rory Schlein, Australian by birth, but riding on a British license and qualified for the British final. He's off the outside gate in yellow. He did ride for Bellevue, but that was over at the old Kirkmansion Lane, Greyhound and Stockcar Stadium, away to our left. And this is heat number eight. After this one, every rider will have completed two rides. Here we go. Very tense, early start. But the referee has allowed the race to go on, and Garrity has got there up the inside. Oh, oh inside and outside. Cranky. Schlein has gone around the outside quite beautifully. Rory Schlein, who's had a very, very good season so far for the Ipswich Witches and for Wolverhampton. He has the lead with Harris in second place. Robson now battling hard with Garrity for third. Garrity's gone wide and oh. has almost lost it, and Robson's come through. But Rory Schlein looking very stylish here. Well, he's bouncing back here very nicely. That was a brilliant first corner from Schlein. Gotta say, Harris is right remarkably well to hang on to him because Schlein has got an awful lot of pace out in front and they charge down the back straight there's no doubt about that Harris really winding it on in second place Garrity third Robson out the back will have to go for Schlein out in front he's got the back tire on the edge of the dirt it really pulls his arms off through that first first and second corner oh he's enjoying this all right Rory Schlein is on his way to victory in heat number eight and that was much needed for him as well Rory Sly, the race winner, second place was Chris Harris, and third was Jason Garrity, and again, a real battle there with Robson at the back, couldn't quite get through, but Rory Sly will feel a lot happier now. Harris has picked up two second places in total now, mm. four points from his two rides, so um, he's uh, very much in contention, it has to be said, and Rory Sly with that win has put him right back uh, on track. He's the winner of heat number eight, Chris Harris second, Jason Garrity third, and Stuart Robson at the back. Schlein is enjoying a great season. He's had his fair share of serious injuries in his career, but he's riding quite nicely now. Oh, a very nervy start from Harris there in blue. Yeah, well, he did move, and I thought for a moment we may have seen a red light come on, but uh, Jim McGregor, the referee, allows it to go. But this first corner, high up on the banking from Schlein, works a treat. He's able to slingshot off that first corner and he generates a lot of pace out in front. Again from the tapes, Garrity makes a good start from the inside, um, but he can't make it stick because he's swamped in that first corner. Robson pushing him on the inside and Schlein around the outside. Harris charging through as well in the second place, but for Rory Schlein, it's, uh, it's a terrific way to bounce back after failing to score in his opening ride. Garrity and uh, Stuart Robson having a battle for third place. But that man there, three points after his first two rides, he'll be happier now. Welcome back to the 2017 British final live here on BT Sport. We had a super heat six. Cookie was the winner. He's with Brando. Craig, Craig, two rides, two wins. It can't get better than that. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, it felt pretty sluggish, though, so uh, we're going to change bike and see if we can get a bit more speed out of it because uh, you know, I made hard work out of it out there, uh, made the start, and then, you know, nearly getting passed by uh, a couple of guys. So, uh, yeah, make a few changes, see if we can get a bit more speed, make my life a bit easier. You alluded to at the beginning of the night about a confidence boost over the weekend. That's a pretty special thing, quali qualifying for the Grand Prix Challenge final in Togliatti in Russia in the middle of August. That's a really great effort. Yeah, uh, but you know, in, in, in the name of the game is to be world champion, that's the top of the shop. Uh, so when that happens, I'll let you know, get a bit more confidence eh? and, and we'll probably talk about it again tonight, but you've had a couple of times to ride at Cardiff. It's a pretty special atmosphere for a rider that gets that chance. Yeah, unreal. And uh, the way I'm going, I feel like I can really mix it up a bit. So let's uh, see if we can get to Cardiff and uh, put the cat among the pigeons. Long way to go. Good luck with the rest of it. Nigel, Kelvin, back to you. Well, Craig Kirk is certainly uh, on top of his game and would be a worthwhile addition to Cardiff and the 
uh, FIM British Speedway Grand Prix at the Principality Stadium on the 22nd of July. Looking forward to that. Always a, a highlight of the Speedway calendar. Yeah, Cook's an interesting customer, you know, because he was a motocross rider for quite some period of time and then quite late on decided to become a Speedway rider and he's now 30 years old. It's like a late bloomer. You know, a little bit like Jason um, Doyle, you know, who's the pennies dropped and all of a sudden the maturity's kicking in and suddenly their performance level has gone up significantly. So all credit to Cook. He's under pressure here tonight. There's lots of work to be done, but um, certainly sounding very confident. Certainly is. It's Carl Howarth with Rory Schlein off two, a winner last time out. Carl Wilkinson off gate three. Paul Stark going off the outside in the yellow and black helmet colour. All these races, of course, vital to these riders. The top six will remain. 10 will go home after heat 20 and then we have the uh, race off one race two riders the first two will go through to the grand final and meet the top two scorers it's drama all the way till the end in the 2017 british championship final stevie warren watching on here we go heat number nine can slide make it two on the ground a good start but so is Howarth in red it's a good start from Howarth but Schlein likes the outside run and now charging up the inside as well don't discount Carl Wilkinson having a go but Schlein is really loving coming off that banking off turn two down the back straight from Howarth in red Stark's come through into second place now Wilkinson battling away as well oh. but Rory Schlein after a shaky start in his owner is really looking classy now up front well quite clearly he's made some alterations to the setup of the bike because he's flying now with Howard in that first corner but once he got up to the middle of the banking he is powering away out in front Howard is working really hard in second place no doubt about that and Paul Stark back in third but Rory Slyne as you're right to say Nigel had an awkward awful opening right failed to score looking like he's going to go back to back wins here and he's looking strong yep Rory Slyne kicking on here and he's going to win this race quite comfortably in the end riding superbly Stunning ride from Rory Schlein. He did all the hard work early on when Howarth was in contention. And it was all about going wide into that banking off turn number two. And the speed that he got down that back straight was simply stunning. Rory Schlein, we remind you, Australian by birth, but now riding on a British license in the British final. Rides for the Ipswich Witches. Good to see Chris Louie, the Ipswich promoter here this evening. And he rides for Wolverhampton. Peter Adams, the Wolves team manager here as well. Schlein, Howarth, Stark, Wilkinson is how heat number nine finished. And that's two on the bounce for Rory Schlein. And he is right back in contention to go at least through to the race off here tonight, Kel. Yeah, good work from Rory Schlein. And we'll show you why. Because once he gets to the first corner, it's neck and neck between Howarth and Schlein as they get to the first corner. But once again, the grip on the outside there, Schlein has the ability to keep the wheels in line. And he powers down the back straight and generates a lot of speed again from the tapes just a little bit of wheel spin there initially just a little greasy on the start line now but uh, no doubt that Howarth there pushing hard pushes Schlein right up the top of the banking but that actually does Schlein a favor because he's able to just get the speed down that back straight and gets himself to the front and is pretty comfortable there and all credit to him uh, zero in his opening ride in his debut British final uh, that would have been quite a blow, so he's shown a lot of maturity there and character to turn his fortunes around. Six points from three rides, that's a good, uh, good, uh, good outcome. And as you rightly say, he's on target for a top six place. Yep, Schlein will be a happy man, has had uh, quite a few clubs in British Speedway during his career. Has won honours with the Coventry Bees and... Uh, as this is our first domestic broadcast of the year, we send our very good wishes to all the Coventry Bees fans who unfortunately aren't seeing their team in action this season. Stadium unavailable at Brandon. We hope sincerely that that's not the last that we see of the famous old site uh, staging Speedway at the Brandon Stadium, which of course staged many, many British finals down oh, the years absolutely. as well. Definitely, yeah, I've rode in one or two, and the Sunday afternoons at Brandon were quite special and uh, having ridden for the Coventry Bees for a number of seasons I do hope that we haven't seen the last of them yep Stuart Robson off the inside in red then Lewis Rhodes goes off gate number two in blue what is opening ride Scotty Nichols riding nicely tonight he's off gate three in white Danny King 
because off the outside in yellow, we can but wonder how that injury is, is affecting Danny King. He didn't ride on Saturday for Leicester in uh, their home meeting against Bellevue at Beaumont Park. Had physio, but you must wonder how fit he is or well, otherwise. Well, it's not the ideal preparation, is it? And uh, you're right to question whether he's absolutely on top of his game. He's changed his bike here, failed to score last time, so quite clearly they decided that uh, they'd rather, instead of fiddle around with the, the previous bike, they want to just try the second one to see if that works a little bit better. But it's going to need to, because the man in gate number three, Nichols, was very impressive last time, got himself to the front, and has had a strong start to tonight's meeting. Five points for the seven-time champion so far. Yep, here we go. This is heat number ten. Better start from Danny King, but it's a long way to that first turn. Rose has been squeezed out. Here comes King down the back straight. There's not a lot of room there. And now down into turn three. What a move from the champion. Danny King does it superbly. Second place in white is Scott Nichols, but charging hard in red as well is his right house teammate, Stuart Robson. Wow. Lewis Rose is at the back, but look how quick Danny King is going now. This is second and third. Nichols and Robson, but Danny King is carving up the opposition. Now, and that Kelvin was a stunning move down the back straight. Was it ever? And he is flying out in front quite clearly. The change of equipment has paid huge dividends because he is really tramping on out in front, looking very impressive indeed. Nichols has no answer to it. None at all. He came under a lot of pressure for two laps from Stuart Robson back in third. But this is all about the champion here. He is really dominant in this race and he's going to win comfortably. Loves this track. Danny King is back. What a ride from the Leicester and Ipswich man in heat number 10. That was a super ride. He really had to work hard. Scott Nichols in the mix. Stuart Robson was there as well. Lewis Rose at the back, but he needed that win, Kelvin. He did, and he came up trumps when he really needed it. And I thought that he may well be signed by the Bellevue Aces. When Coventry closed, he was a Coventry rider. He became available, and he's liking to this place. I just wonder whether the Aces were tempted to sign him. Well, I'll tell you what, that was an excellent ride from Danny King there. King, Nichols, Robson, Rose. That puts King on five points. It wouldn't have surprised me if they fancied signing him, but they were true to their word. They were. And stuck with the seven riders that they'd agreed with. But nonetheless, they must have been tempted because absolutely. this man absolutely <laughs> flies around here. And this is a great demonstration, a great an opportunity to see why they were tempted. Brilliant first corner, great shots. Robson riding strongly here. And uh, Nichols has to really dive hard up the inside of his teammate. They're both riding for the right house Rockets this season. Out in front, Dan Danny King is probably as impressive as anybody has been so far this evening. Look at that, leaning all over the riders as they go down the back street. I can't tell you how quick it is here. Really is fast here. And once they get those uh, wheels in the dirt, the bike picks up huge amounts of speed. The change of equipment, a genius stroke from the team, and King flying out in front. Brilliant. Well, I reckon the final is going to be something special here. It's going to be so tense at that start line when we get uh, to the 22nd racer tonight. You can just sense already that uh, we're, we're approaching the midway point of the meeting and all of a sudden the ante's being up, Nigel, and riders are really beginning to strut their stuff. Harris, who has had a solid start to the night, he's on four points from two rides, needs a win, and uh, needs a win. He's got the speed, he's having a good season. He's out of the Grand Prix, although he uh, has tried to requalify. I think he just missed out in the semi-finals. Wall will be no easy man to beat. He was another very impressive rider last time. And Craig Cook is off the outside in this one as well. So he's unbeaten. Doesn't get any easier then, does he? <laughs> <laughs> no, quite a lineup here. Ben Barker, a winner of his opening ride. And uh, this is a very, very tasty lineup indeed. Heat number 11. Still a lovely warm evening here in Manchester. We're not too far away here, this venue from uh, the Etihad, Manchester City Football Club, just over in the distance. And uh, this stadium now in its second year of operation, the National Speedway Stadium was over a decade in the planning. Huge relief to see it built and open for last year. Chris Harris off the inside, Stevie Worrell goes off gate number two. Gate three is Ben Barker with Craig Cook going off the outside in yellow. Can anybody stop Craig Cook here tonight? If anybody can, Stevie Waddle perhaps, Chris Harris on his day, 
Oh. Maybe even Barker, but well, Cook's still the favourite, isn't he, Kel? He is the favourite, but he's coming from the outside, which is no easy task. It's a long way to the first corner. He'll be heading for that dirt in the outside, I presume. If he can get there first, he's got every chance of winning the race. But Harris and Worrell on the first two gates, it'll be hard to beat. home shale here tonight winner in Terenzano Italy on Saturday of the Grand Prix semi-final qualifier through to the Grand Prix challenge now Craig Cook how good it would be to see him in the GP next year full-time to have a second British rider in the Grand Prix in 2018 he's enjoying himself so yeah. are the fans it's Craig Cook at Bellevue who's just pulled off a hat-trick of wins yeah he has indeed I wonder if his teammate will have a word with him in the pits there because he was awfully tough on him in down in turns three and four but Cook brilliant out in front nine out of nine yeah Barker was second and Harris was third Worrell at the back Steve Worrell then trailed in at the back that means he's on five from three rides and that last place now means that Steve Worrell has got work to do in his last two outings to make it through to the race off at least when he goes from first to last here he made an absolutely jet propelled start away from gate two left a big hole there going into the first corner and although it was a poor start for Cook he reacted brilliantly here he realized very quickly that he wasn't going to get there and as Worrell and uh, Harris all charge up the banking, look, he's had a lot of track there, and he uses uh, a little bit of nows there, a little bit of track expertise, and he gets himself to the front. It's then a very tough bottom corner between the two Bellevue boys, and that man came out on top. Nine points out of nine, taking no prisoners, clearly very determined to be crowned the champion for the first time. Very much so. Nine points out of nine, but we remind you, it is all about what happens in one race. That's the grand final. How often do we see in uh, Grand Prix or other meetings where it's all decided in one race where you maybe even go through the card and then he gets to the final and you don't make it? Well, the pressure builds, Nice, because you're absolutely right to point this out. He can win every race, but if you don't win the run at the end, the most important one, you will not be crowned champion. It could be argued that it's not strictly fair, but quite uh, certainly for television and for people in the stands, it does keep them on the edge of their seats. But Cook so far has looked terrific. And Jason Garrity just having a few last minute adjustments. Garrity is a rider that can be a spoiler, but he's been injury prone of late and is quite clearly not at his best. Richard Lawson going out of gate three this time. And uh, he's had a decent start to tonight's meeting on five points and uh, seems very fired up indeed and you can see him adding to that here certainly on the evidence of his first two rides he should be well his favorite for me Garrity has changed his bike so quite clearly they were just readjusting the rear chain and he'll be hoping that that one's got a little bit more speed in it this time yeah, very much so Lewis Kerr who's uh, found life tough tonight and uh, this is heat number 12 after this race every rider will have completed three outings we get a clear picture of the contenders for the top six it's Richie Worrell off the inside Jason Garrity goes off gate two in blue Richard Lawson gate three in white and Lewis Kerr going off the outside in yellow can Richard Lawson continue his good form here five points out of a possible six Lawson who quite clearly loving this track yeah 
and uh, there he is very very fast rider let's see how he gets on here against his uh, Glasgow teammate Richie Wall who's on the inside gate this is heat 12 Start by Garrity off gate number two. Jason Garrity has done superbly well and charging up the inside. Lewis Kerr oh. in yellow and black. Where has he come from? That is a surprise. Now charging through in red is Richie Worrell. Lawson is in white up the inside. Lawson charging hard. But the lead here is with Lewis Kerr in yellow and black. Second place in red, Richie Worrell. And third in white here, Richard Lawson. This has got a long way to go yet, though, folks. It has indeed. Lewis Kerr surprising the pack here. Brilliant opening couple of Think you look over his left shoulder. Warrell is right there. If he's not careful, Warrell will bounce. Now he does. Extra bit of grip for Warrell. Gets himself to the front. Covers the move from Kerr. Lawson, though. Keep your eyes on Lawson. Lawson riding right around the outside. And that's the go. Richie Warrell just about in front, but he's not comfortable there. Yep, Warrell just about hanging on. Doesn't seem to have the speed tonight, though, Richie Warrell. It's Lewis Kerr second, and watch out for Lawson. Has Lawson gone too wide? Yes, he has. It's Richie Warrell who takes that checkered flag. Super right in the end, but he seems to be really working hard to get every bit of speed out of that bike tonight. Second place, Lewis Kerr, and third was Richard Lawson. And Garrity, the man who made such a good start, ended up at the back. Fans in the sunshine, the evening sunshine here in Manchester. We've now had 12 of the heats of this Integro British Championship final for 2017 here in Manchester. Richie Worrell, the race winner. Lewis Kerr was second. Richard Lawson was third. And Jason Garrity at the back. The Wallat had a bit of everything. It did. And it was a surprise for some period of time there because Louis Kerr, who had nothing to show for his efforts so far, makes exactly the same move that Craig Cook did in the previous race. They all went charging up the bank there. Certainly Garrity did. And after making such a good start, he relegated himself to the back. Louis Kerr there coming, charging across the opposition, coming out of the first corner. Here he comes. There's obviously a fresh bit of dirt there and just gets a little bit of extra drive and that enables him to get to the front. But all credit to uh, Richie Worrell. He responds very well here and uh, works his way back into the race and works his way back to the front. There you see it. There's a bit of grip there and uh, he finds it and that enables him to get to the front. We're seeing it again, Kerr on the outside, and now Richie Warren, there's just a fresh bit of grip there, and it just enables you to get a little bit of speed, and that enabled him to punch his way to the front. The Warrell brothers are having a reasonable night, but uh, he's got better every race so far tonight. Yep, well, the action hotting up nicely here. Every rider has now completed three rides here in the British final. Craig Cook, the out-and-out -out leader on nine points. It's all about who gets into the top six. The top two go straight through to the grand final. Right now, though, every rider has got two heats remaining to stake a claim. We've got the heat number 13 and more vital points up for grabs when we come back in a few moments. Welcome back to the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. 12 heats down in the British final. A bit of track grading going on, so let's get to the pits. Steve has got Danny King. Danny, change of bike and a much-needed change of result. Yeah, it's the worst possible start, really. Not sure what was going on with the first bike. It wasn't coming off the start and was sluggish on track, so just made a, a jump on the second bike there, and it was completely different. So it's not a start I wanted, obviously, but um, it's nice to get the win and a couple more get into that semi now. Having had a chance to be British champion, it's not a title you want to let go of easily, is it? No, not at all. I, I'm just so disappointed, but I needed that last win and um, build myself back up now, make a few more starts, as I say, and get the points on the board. Two to go, a gate one, a gate two. It might have just fallen the right time for you, the draw. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Um, you know, you've got to be clever in the first bend off the inside gates, but um, I've been watching the track and hopefully we can get it off the first corner and get some speed out front. Thanks for your time. Good luck with the last two. Uh, Natalie, you've uh, found a special guest tonight. I do have a very special guest. In fact, he's a regular special guest down here at the National Speedway Stadium. It is the Isle of Man TT legend, John McGuinness. Uh, John's suffering a very bad injury at the moment. Last month it was in the Northwest 200 over in Ireland. Just remind people what happened. Yeah, the big crash. I went from fourth to third gear and had a technical problem. And I had to get off the bike. It was a long uh, radius left hand. I uh, got off the bike, went up a pavement, through a fence. And uh, I'm not a great golf fan, but uh, I ended up on uh, the eighth green of a, of a golf course with... Uh, yeah, I broke my tip and fib and uh, broke some bones in my lower back and broke some ribs, so I've had a bit of a rough few weeks, to be honest. So. Time off to enjoy a bit of speed. Right? You've got Joe Screen's sticker on your crutches somewhere. Uh, what have you made of the British final so far? It's been great, you know. Beautiful evening down in Manchester. Speedway is best, you know. Uh, Cookie's on fire. We're, all the locals are behind him. He's got some huge fans behind here. It's, it's great atmosphere. And, uh, 
I love it, you know, I haven't been out much over the last few weeks and uh, I got another operation on Thursday. I'm not sure the surgeon knows I'm here with a bit of speedway shale going in my uh, leg, but uh, I wouldn't miss it. I got some boys to bring me down in the car because I can't drive, but I didn't want to miss the speedway down at Bellevue. Great to see you, and we wish you all the best with the operation. I'm sure we'll see John McGuinness at Cardiff as well. Let's get back to the pits. Brando is with Steve, uh, Scott Nichols. Scott, uh, we get to hear you giving your assessment of riders every couple of weeks on the Grand Prix. What's your assessment of Scott Nichols tonight after three rides? He's his back signing gear, doesn't he? <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's doing okay. He needs to make some changes, I guess. Uh, but no, it's just going all right. It's, uh, obviously, we'd like to win. Danny was quick in that one, so uh, we need to make a couple of changes for my next one and see how we go there. You've won this title more than any other rider in history before, but another one, an eighth one, that wouldn't go too bad, would it? I'd love to. You know, last few years haven't quite gone my way, and I had a, a terrible season here last year, so on a personal note for me to, to come away here with a win would be awesome. Seven points in the bag, two to go. Good luck with the rest of it. Thank you. Kelvin, Nigel, all yours. Well, heat number 13 coming up, but it's that man, Craig Cook, once again here. Uh, three rides and three wins so far. So the big question is, can anybody stop Craig Cook? Let's remind you of how it looks here so far. Nine points so far for Craig Cook. Scott Nichols, who we've just spoken to there. Seven points for him, and then a whole host of riders on six apiece. Schlein, Richie Worrell, Parker, and Lawson. But it's tight as well, just outside the top six. So very, very competitive, Kel. Indeed it is. You know, you've got to believe that um, even if you're on like five or even four points, with two rides to go, you can't throw the town in yet. It's uh, still everything to race for. Cook is the favourite here, no doubt about that. Uh, he seems to feel that the change of equipment, like Danny King, has proved to be fruitful. He's the only rider that uh, remains unbeaten at uh, this stage of the night. Um, he just needs to keep it going now. He's on a roll. And uh, he's enjoying probably the best season in the sport so far to this date. Um, Louis Kerr is on the inside here, and he was quite a surprise package last time. Interested to see if he can repeat it this time. Yep, heat number 13 coming up there. Kerr, very competitive in his previous ride, as Kelvin alluded to there. He's off the inside. Stuart Robson goes off gate number two in blue. Gate three in white is Craig Cook, unbeaten so far. And off the outside is Carl Wilkinson. And with the greatest of respect to the opposition for Craig Cook here, it's hard to see beyond a Craig Cook victory in uh, heat number three. Oh, sorry, off gate number three, I should say. <laughs> and his fourth ride, we are up to heat 13. And yeah. a win here. And you could almost pencil him in for a place straight through into the grand final. Yeah, he's looking really good. And uh, this race has fallen for him. And he's got to do it. Can't be complacent because we've seen it already this evening. Surprise just can't happen. Here we go. Yep, here we go then. Heat number 13 it is. Jim McGregor with his finger on the button. And away they go. And it's a good start once again from the man in red, Lewis Kerr. But watch out for... Craig Cook charging up the inside. Cook's got lots of speed, but the man in red hangs on Lewis Kerr. Battling away, Craig Cook on the inside. Coming round as well is Stuart Robson in blue. Roy Abreu going into lap two. Craig Cook holds that inside line. Home track knowledge, but this is great stuff from Lewis Kerr. Really battling hard. And Stuart Robson in blue as well. Fabulous ride from Lewis Kerr. Brilliant out in front. A great start, he spun up off of gate three. We can see it quite clearly. And this is again is a surprise. Unbeaten coming into this cook. Louis Kerr failed to score in his first two outings. This flying out in front. Back to go. Kerr has bounced back and really is riding supremely well out in front. Yeah, this is a super ride from Lewis Kerr. He really has just sprung into action these last two rides. Riding beautifully now. Down to the checkered flag. It's Lewis Kerr from Craig Cook. Third place in blue there went to Stuart Robson, and that was a surprise no, result for me. Didn't see that. No, not at all. And this is what, I, what I've been mentioning earlier on. A reminder, this title will be decided in one grand final. All about what happens. But really now, with Cook on 11, you could suggest that it's almost job done in terms of the first part of the evening for Cook, getting through to the grand final. But um, he's been beaten for the first time. Heat number eight, confirmation of the result. Lewis Kerr, the race winner. Craig Cook was second. Stuart Robson has been really in the mix without getting the points that he deserves. And Carl Wilkinson has found life tough tonight. He hasn't scored. He finished at the back there. He came in for Josh Orty, by the way, as a replacement in tonight's meeting. Well, a smashing start from the inside there from Lewis Kerr. He goes charging up the bank, and this time it works for him. 
and the inside route that uh, Cook decides to, to use just doesn't quite have the same grip and the same speed that it generated previously. They've done plenty of track grading and it quite clearly has uh, enabled the riders to use the outside line. Well, credit to Kirk. I would really be hoping that the meeting started now, really, because the last two races he's only dropped a point, and the previous two he didn't score. Cook will be uh, frustrated here. He would have expected to win this race, but uh, all credit to that man, Kerr. That's a really encouraging ride, and after a desperate start, look at that, naught, naught, two, three from his last two. Uh, I don't know if he can make the semi-finals from there, even with a win, but nonetheless, winning races puts a smile on your face. Yep, so uh, good ride from Lewis Kerr. We recall a couple of years ago he had some serious injuries, didn't he, Lewis? Oh, crikey, yes. Peterborough, um, yep. I tell you, he had an awful crash, and he has made a really remarkable um, recovery. He rode for the Lakeside Hammers last year and uh, got stronger as the season went on, and he's enjoying a better season here um, this year once again for Scunthorpe. Yep, and uh, recently joined... Somerset as well. Uh, yes, that's right, with Richard Lawson, that's right. Had a, sh had a short spell with Poole as well, early in the season, so um, I think Lewis Kerr is dial a rider. When you need a rider, give, <laughs> give Lewis a call. As bike will travel, that's for sure. Yep. Um, but this man needs a good performance now. Hasn't managed to win a race so far, Harris. Has been trying his socks off, always does, but hasn't quite managed to get himself to the front. Hasn't had a really good track record here at the new National Speedway Stadium. Needs to turn his night around if he wants to uh, get himself to the semi-final. OK, heat number 14 is coming up here. And uh, we have the reigning champion, Danny King, off the inside gate. Richie Worrell going off too. Let's just confirm the lineup for you then. It's Danny King from Richie Worrell with Chris Harris off gate three and Paul Stark going off at the outside. That's your lineup for heat number 14. Chris Harris, nice picture of him in a woolly hat. And a nice jacket. He wasn't wearing that tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> Here we go, heat 14. Oh. And the red lights are on straight away. Oh, I tell you, the two riders on the inside went, went, went as one there. Um, but uh, quite clearly, um, a little bit too eager to get on with it. I do go back to what they've introduced to the Grand Prix, because the, the warning, when you have an official warning that stays with you all night, Ooh. it stops that. It has, it has worked. I, was, I wasn't sure about it at the beginning of the season, but uh, now I've seen it work on several occasions. We've seen riders with warnings win Grand Prix, so it, it doesn't hold them back. It just makes them behave a little bit better on the start. So. Richie Worrell just a bit too keen to get on underway with it there. And isn't it ironic that the two riders that have been pulled back um, to the start, they're just straight back to the start, and the two riders who behave themselves have gone for some work to their bikes. And that I don't understand. You know, there's no real reason for them not to go straight back round to the tapes and unnecessary delay. There are under two minutes. There's a minute and a half to go. They will be aware of that. But Paul Stark has now had a top up of fuel, which he must have a small tank because um, normally you can normally get eight laps out of a fuel tank on a speedway bike. But, Even um, on this size track? Uh, probably seven then. <laughs> say seven, but that's more than enough. But um, uh, you're right, you're right to say it because the throttle's wide open and they'll be using plenty of fuel around here. And Harris is now making his way down the back straight for the restagings of his fourth outing. And Harris needs something, Nigel. He's been. He had. Four points from his first two, but subsequently he uh, dropped points in his third outing, only had third points, so he needs to come up with a big ride now. Don't forget, plenty of speedway coming up. We have uh, the Grand Prix in Denmark on Saturday from 6 o'clock UK time, I do believe. 6 o'clock UK 7 o'clock there. Yep, it's the Danish Grand Prix in Horsens at the Casa Arena. Patrick Dudek leads the World Championship from Jason Doyle, who rides for the Swindon Robins here in the UK. And then we're back next Monday with the Premiership at Paul. So it's a busy old schedule for Speedway now. Danny King off the inside, Richie Waddle off two, Chris Harris gate three, and Paul Stark going off the outside gate. By the way, Ty Woffenden, eighth in the World Championship right now, the man born in Scunthorpe. Represents Great Britain in the World Championship. Woofie currently eighth in the World Championship. Heat number 14. Here we go. Second time of asking. 
and they're away this time, no problem. Going into that first turn, Danny King has got the drive, but watch out for the man around the Elden, bunching up down the back straight here. Oh. This is so typical of Bellevue, and down into that turn goes Richie Worrell, he's going to try the inside switch on Danny King. Richie Worrell comes through, Harris is battling with Stark, but King just about hangs on in there. Yeah, once again, Danny King looking very impressive, but Richie Worrell's found some speed. They're all bunched up there, Harris is out the back trying to get the better of Paul Starr. Very close for second, third and fourth. Now look at that, King loves this place, you can just see the way he rides the bike, he allows it to run really deep into the corners, and he's generating the extra speed to pull away out in front. Harris now through in the third place, and Richie Wall in the second place. Yeah, the track looks super smooth here tonight, these riders are loving it, aren't they? They're really winding on the throttle, but it's going to be a convincing win here for Danny King. Chris Harris tries the inside run on the inside, but it's King from Wall from Stark and uh, that was a good old battle but Danny King after that blip which it's turned out to be was a, a blip in his second ride when you had me questioning his fitness or otherwise he's since reeled off two straight wins so yeah, that's you wrote him off straight away I, yeah, um, you I, know, know, I opened uh, my mouth before I had think no that's patience the problem with him. <laughs> yeah. no patience with him at all but I, <laughs> I'm glad he didn't hear you because he's responded brilliantly he said in his interview with Steve earlier on that, uh, you know, they chose the wrong bike and now the change of equipment is playing big dividends. Two wins for King, that's looking good. Yep, Worrell was second, Richie Worrell was second. He moves on to eight points. Uh, that's level with Danny King on eight. Chris Harris, just a point for Harris in that one. I've been disappointed with that. Here we see it again. Yeah, super ride from Danny King. Has a sneaky look over his right shoulder. He made a good start from the inside gate. Worrell pushes him hard here. Look how close that was. Three of them abreast going down the back straight. Really was uh, tremendously exciting on the opening lap here. King then elects to go wide. I thought for a moment Worrell might be able to get there. This is early doors again. Look how tight that was. Harris out the back. He's having a hard night, Harris. I fancied him to put on a big, big performance tonight. Chopping back to the inside there, Richie Worrell, trying to get the better of the champion, but he can't. And Danny King delighted with that. He's back in with a shout. He doesn't want to relinquish that uh, championship. He's got his uh, promoter in there alongside him, a former British champion as well, Chris Louie. He knows what it's all about. And Danny King now, with the uh, eight points to his name, looking good for the uh, semi-final. Yeah. Chris Louie, who had a fantastic career as a rider. World number three back in 1993 in Pocking in Germany. Uh, I remember that day very well when Sam Omelenko won that. And uh, some real titanic tussles uh, Chris had with Mark Loram in the British final. And there's been some many, many memorable moments. We're moving on to heat number 15 here now. And it's Rory Schlein off the inside gate. Look at his record, a last place and then two straight wins. What can he do? He's in red. We're seeing Ben Barker here, but it's uh, Rory Schlein is in red uh, on the inside there. So uh, he really has find, found the right setup. Rory Schlein and uh, yeah, Richard Lawson has. going off three as well. While they're going about his business line, we haven't heard from him so far this evening, but uh, after a disappointing outing first time, has really looked very impressive subsequently. Lawson is battling hard. No surprise there. That's the type of character he is. He always gives of his best. And uh, he's certainly very much involved in this. Ben Barker was quicker last time. Seven-time uh, British champion Nichols just keenly looking on, keeping an eye on how the track is evolving. But uh, the lineup for E15. Yes, slide off the inside with Ben Barker going off gate number two. Richard Lawson goes off gate three, and Lewis Rose is off the outside. This is heat number 15 here at the National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. It's the British final. 20 heats to decide the qualifiers for the semi final and the final. Here we go. And slide making three. Lawson's made a beauty from gate three, but Schleiner's going to ride a nice line here. Schleiner's got all the experience, and I'll tell you what, he is riding a lovely line. Lawson will put pressure on here. Rose is the man in yellow and black. The man in blue is Ben Barker, but Rory Schleiner's riding beautifully, with Lawson charging hard on. Oh! I'll tell you what, Lewis Rose had to get off the gas there to avoid a collision with Ben Barker. Well, Ben Barker was ruthless there. The leg out the back and came charging into third place. Super first corner from Slime. Clark's first corner from Slime.
stage first. Richard Lawson is now going to come under a lot of pressure from Ben Barker if he's not careful. Barker's coming on strong in third got place. Speed. He has got a lot of speed. He is charging in the dirt. Leg out the back. He is really wide. Driving the wheels off his motorbike. Now switches to the inside. That is some ride from Barker. Now Lawson back up the inside. Brilliant speedway. This is a great racetrack, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be a convincing win for Rory Schlein. But a battle for second spot. And Barker gets it. Full credit, right. Ben Barker. That was a brilliant ride from Barker. And that's only for second place, by the way. We're seeing Schlein here. Three wins on the bounce of Rory Schlein. Full credit to him. But my goodness, Ben Barker provided all the entertainment there. <laughs> and Richard ride. Lawson was absolutely furious as he went over the line, realising that it dropped a point to Barker there. But you could tell how determined the red car Bears rider was there. Ben Barker going high into the dirt, probably wider than anybody else has been in that turn three and four tonight. And he did the trick, but well done, Rory Schlein. Schlein was superb there. Really clever in the first corner, didn't panic because riders were using the outside run. But uh, the Australian man now, three wins on the spin, that's a terrific effort from him. Yeah, the British final, the Australian born Rory Schlein, Ben Barker, Richard Lawson. That's the finishing order for heat number 15. Yeah, they come charging towards the first corner, and it's Schlein on the inside that makes it his. He's not tempted to go too wide, and it pays dividends. He's able to get to the front down the back straight. Lawson into second place early on, and there's no doubt that Ben Barker was the star of the show here. He was certainly Mr. Entertainment, that's for sure. He's out the back here at the early stage, and then rides absolutely supremely well. He gets the better of Lewis Rose initially, and then he comes on it's really strong as the race comes to its conclusion oh. and it gets the better yeah really tough move there you picked out on it uh, in real time nigel and there's no doubt that uh, ben barker was on a mission here and he then gets himself into second place really determined display from ben barker really exciting race from him and gets the two points terrific effort but schlein is stealthily under the radar going about his business here very calm and collected he's got nine points out of 12 and i've got to say he has picked his performance up hugely after a disappointing opening ride he's a man to be feared yeah he's um like you said kelvin he's just keeping himself to himself in the pits there not showing any emotion but he'd be delighted with three wins on the trot and uh, as I say, he's had a fine season for the Ipswich Witches. And then when Wolverhampton made early season changes, they brought in Mark Riss and Rory Schlein at the expense of Adam Skornitsky and Max Clegg. And that move has transformed Wolves. They're up there knocking on the door for topping the table again towards uh, the playoffs in September. Well, it's a clever move by the management of Wolverhampton because there's no doubt that Schlein and Mark Riss, the German, has settled in very nicely indeed. And Wolves look very strong right now. Stevie Worrell off the inside, needs points here, the Bellevue man. Kyle Howarth goes off gate number two in blue. Jason Garrity, gate three in white, and Scotty Nichols outside in yellow and black. It's a long way to that first turn, but Scott has, Scott has ridden pretty well tonight, Kel. Yeah, seven points from his opening uh, three rides. Didn't have the pace of King last time, but still, it's a good return, and it's keeping him right in amongst the thick of the action. Still very much in contention to win an eight. British Championship. You're dead right to point out that Worrell needs points. Really got beaten up last time and failed to score by his own teammate in truth. Cook was ruthless. So Worrell on the inside could do with a win here. Here we go. He's number 16. Pressure on Stevie Worrell. Oh, that's got to come back. That has got to come back again. Red lights on straight away and it was Kyle Howarth who moved. Do you know, it frustrates me. We, you know, it just delays the meeting. You're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it. It clearly moves early. In actual fact, it could be maybe even his helmet clipped the tapes on the way up. Ooh. It does. It clips his peak. That is not an exclusion. It's the tyre that needs to touch the tapes. But you can see how early he's touched. He's dropped the clutch. And um, no, I, I don't understand. It's almost like an epidemic right now. And you see, now we're seeing, once again, a delay to the meeting. Yes, so uh, frustration here, but this is seat number 16, and after this race, every rider will have completed four rides, so um, the Kyle Howarth camp making one or two adjustments. Scott Nichols has gone back to the um, pits area as well, or should I say the entrance to the pits area.
Scotty, who uh, certainly did have a heck of a commute from well, Suffolk here. Well, we're seeing an exclusion light now, Nigel. Yes, the blue was... exclusion light is on. Well, now I thought that it was the tyre, the bike that had to touch the tapes. His helmet certainly did touch the tapes, the peak. Now, whether his front tyre touched the tape, and that's the reason for the exclusion, or whether the law has been changed. Um... Well, this is Jack Smith now, who's going to come in in blue. And Jack is the uh, son of the former British champion, Andy Foxy Smith. He's in the, uh, the line-up tonight. First reserve. Son of now, Andy. let me just uh, remind you that Howarth was warned earlier in the evening. Howarth was warned earlier in the evening, and that is the reason why this measure has been taken. Right, OK. It was the well, second that time that Kyle has done that, and he has been disqualified for technically delaying the start. Well, he has. And the fact that is that he's paid the ultimate price, hasn't he, with, with, with an exclusion. And I think it's something that, you know, it's, it's frustrating for all. He'll be certainly very angry about that. He'll feel hard done by, but um, he has had two attempts at trying to anticipate the start. Frustration then for Kyle Howarth. And coming in is Jack Smith, rider number 17 here tonight. Uh, frustration for Kyle, local lad, as we say, from Staley Bridge. But, um, alas, missing out here and probably not going any further in this British final. Frustrating night for him. So Jack Smith comes in in blue. Uh, rider number 17, first reserve, and as I say, family tradition. Stevie Worrell off the inside, Jack Smith off two, Jason Garrity gate three, and going off the outside, Scott Nichols. And that is the yeah. uh, lineup for heat number 16. So Smith who, uh, as I say, is Dan Andy, a <laughs> former Bellevue rider as well. He did. He won this championship three times on the spin, Andy, and uh, was hugely successful and was a Grand Prix rider, of course, as well. And uh, there's uh, Dan Bewley, another superstar in these right. He's uh, a really young rider with a huge potential. I've seen him ride on one or two flying occasions. Flying this year. And he is flying, and there's no doubt that he has. There's Andy, Jack's dad on the right of Ben Barker, just having a joke. He'll pick just a little bit nervous now, Andy. Smudger is his nickname. And at times he could be really, really fast. Well, I first saw Andy Smith around the old Hyde Road. He was brilliant. And uh, here he is, his son now in the British final. That is a great start from the inside here with Stevie Worrell in red. What can Scott Nichols do now to try and get around the outside? Jack Smith's on the pace in blue, but Garrity's going to go around him. And here comes Nichols now. Nichols is going to put the pressure on. Of this race, and oh, right down to the fence. Steve Wall just about hangs on. Nichols is second, Garrity is third, and Jack Smith in the blue helmet not doing himself any disgrace here. No. He's on the pace, the young man. That's it for right from Smith. Great opening lap of speedway from Worrell. Worrell had to be good because Nichols really put him under a huge amount of pressure, and there's no doubt about that pressure is still there because Nichols is trying everything he knows in second place. Worrell out in front, Nichols back in second place, desperately like looking for a way through, and that's the go, and the seven-time champion find a way to the front. Well, how close to that fence oh, is Worrell oh, getting? Is and Nichols is really having a go. He wants this, Scott Nichols. He's going wide. He wants it. Worrell's held the line on the inside and has got it up. Good race. Very, very competitive and very, very fast as well. And that was a super ride from Stevie Worrell, who's put himself right back into contention here with Garrity third and Jack Smith at the back, but was on the pace, young Jack. Hmm. That was good to see. Talented teenage rider. Well, what a ride from Worrell. He needed that. He had a disappointing outcome in his previous ride, but under massive pressure from Nichols, comes up with a sterling ride there. Puts him on to eight. Nichols is on nine now, consistent. Garrity gets a point. No points for Jack Smith. And it was it a good race, though, Kelvin. It was a super race. Warrell makes a good start on the inside, has an immediately he looked to his right. He's in the middle of the track there and rides really smoothly down the back straight. Now he comes under pressure here. Nichols then dive bombed him going into turn three. The door's open for it. You can see Nichols there really putting him under pressure momentarily. Just had his nose in front. Look how wide he went there. Warrell really wide indeed. I don't think anybody has ridden wider than that, possibly Ben Barker. Here we're coming into the latter stages of the race. Worrell elects to go right round the inside with Nichols desperately trying to find the speed round the outside, but not quite enough. Excellent ride from Worrell there, 
under a massive amount of pressure from the seven-time British champion Scotty Nichols back in second place. What will we be pleased with that? Because he'll be uh, he would have been very frustrated about his third ride. Well, been a good night so far here in Manchester. We hope you're enjoying it. Craig Cook, 11 points with Rory Schlein and Scott Nichols on nine apiece. That's how it's looking after 16 heats of this British Speedway final here in Manchester. We've got four qualifying heats to come and they will determine the top two scorers straight into the final and the next four for the race off. Four more heats to come to decide it. Join us after the break. Welcome back. You're watching live Speedway here on BT Sport, where Rory Schlein is bidding to become the first Australian to win the British Championship. And nine points so far, three wins on the bounce. It's going well. Yeah, um, our first one, it, uh, yeah, we swapped bikes and, um, you know, and it felt a whole lot better. Um, we haven't changed anything since then, and now it feels pretty good at the minute. You've only had four races around this track before tonight as well, haven't you? How is it tonight? Yeah, it, um, so we're sort of going in a little bit blindfold. We sort of knew what to expect, but... Um, yeah, we got some kit that uh, is pretty good from Peter Johns at the minute, so um, no, reasonably happy with it. What would it mean to you to win the British title and go to Cardiff as the wild card? Um, it, you know, like, like any national championship, it would be an honour. Um, the wild card's a, a cherry on the top, and um, you know, for any any speedway rider as a kid, you know, you'd always want to race in Cardiff. So, you know, dreams do come true. Rory, great to talk to you. We wish you best for the uh, for your final ride. Uh, Steve Brandon is with Craig Cook. I am indeed Craig Cook, just doing some work on his bike. Craig, uh, if I could disturb you there for a minute. Long time between heat 13 and heat 20 for your draw number 14. You have to really keep an eye on the bike, the track, how everything's changing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, tried something in that last trick there, you know, testing. Um, obviously, um, <laughs> one of the weaker races, dare I say that, but uh, uh, yeah, I think, thought that was the race to test something in, just to, to see if it would work uh, for later on in the meeting. Um, obviously, the, the, the last race, you know, it all boils down to one race. So, uh, yeah, we're just trying a few things now, just tweaking a little few things. And, um, but, yeah, we're going to go back similar to what we had before and uh, hopefully we can get a bit more speed out of the thing. So having the chance to sort of the little bit of luxury with the points you've scored, to be able to experiment in the, the meeting, that, that's quite useful, but sometimes can be confusing. Oh, yeah, it's not, a, not hard to confuse me. And, uh, yeah, we just, made, we just made the wrong decision sim simply, but, you know, we, we know now not to do that in the final, so, um, you know, live and learn, and, um, you know, draw only dropped the one point, so uh, hopefully we'll get three in the next one and go right through to the final and uh, get first gear pick. Just one last one. What would it mean to Craig Cook to be national speedway champion? It would mean the world to me, you know. Um, I run a joke with the boys, you know, my logo is CC111, but lately the boys have been calling me CC222, so uh, we need to rectify this and... Uh, Stop them giving me some stick. Appreciate your time. Love the smile. Thank you very much. Kelvin Tatum, Nigel Pearson, all yours. This is how it stands then with uh, four qualifying races remaining. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, quite a few riders in contention for the top six, as you can see. Don't rule out the likes of Chris Harris still on six. Um, although we are down to the last round of heats. Every rider now has only one heat remaining to get into the top six that's yeah. the target harris is gonna have to have a bit of good fortune i think you know it hasn't been his night hasn't been able to win a race nickels up here well he's on uh, nine points so you would like to think another point or two here will keep him well and truly in the top six richard lawson is just outside the top six he's now coming off of gate four shown some good speed earlier on but uh, dropped a valuable point last time and was frustrated with that so a big ride for Lawson if he wants to make the semi-final tonight. Jason Garrity, we are now hearing, that uh, has withdrawn from the meeting. That injury quite clearly that he sustained a week or two ago. Um, he uh, just can't quite cope with it. But there's no doubt uh, this is pressure cooker time here because Harris is desperate for points. And so is Lawson if they want to have uh, another ride here this evening. Yes, well, um, I can tell you, yes, Jason Garrity has withdrawn. He has had that um, hand injury, and I suspect that now he's out of contention for a place later on. He's decided not to take his last ride, so that will go to uh, Andy Mellish.
Carl Wilkinson, Chris Harris, Scott Nichols, and Richard Lawson is how it looks in Heat 17. What about the track, Kel? Has it behaved as you thought it would when you did your track report earlier? Yeah, very good. And uh, I think it's uh, been a tribute to the track curator because with the weather, never easy to get enough moisture into it. And it's behaved impeccably. We've seen some you know, really high speed action and we've seen some terrific overtaking. So yeah, once again, the track has come up from big time tonight. Yep, heat number 17 it is down here. Good start for Nichols off gate number three, but Harris is there as well. We've got a race on now because Lawson's at the back. Can you believe this? Now Nichols is going to go high down that back straight. He's getting plenty of speed. Lawson's coming through into third, but Harris now has that lead. Scott Nichols is second. Richard Lawson tries the inside Lawson cuts up the inside of Nichols now, and Lawson will try and go wide and take him out, but, oh. and he's just about done it up. There's not a lot of room down that back straight, but Harris has got the lead. Harris is looking really fast out in front. Finally, he's down the centre and got himself to the front. Scott Nichols has just been out battled there by Richard Lawson. Terrific effort from him, and he's now stretching his legs down the back straight. This is disappointment for Nichols. I think he probably has just about got enough for a semi final spot. Harris out in front. Oh, if only he could have had this speed a little bit earlier on. Well, it's going to put him on to nine points, so he's just got to sit and wait now, Chris Harris. He's not out of it. Chris Harris on to nine points with a big win in his last ride. He certainly saved his best until last, and that was a fair old battle as well, yeah. uh, because <laughs> Richard Lawson finishing in second spot and well, Chris Harris he. third with Carl Wilkinson's night over with another last place there. Well, but, Lawson uh, must move on to nine as well. He, yep. And uh, eight. Eight, excuse me. Yep. So uh, that's how it is. Chris Harris, the race winner, gives himself a chance. Richard Lawson second. Oh, no, make, you're right. It's I'll nine. Make it nine, actually. You are nice. spot on. Sorry, your, your maths is better than mine. Yeah, not normally, but in Scott this Nichols first time in 20 third. years, I got it right. Yes, yes. <laughs> and here's the race again. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And you've got to say that Chris Harris rides like a champion here. Superstar from him. Allows the bike to sweep up the banking and charges down the back straight. Nichols into second place early on, but can't stay there. This is a really good effort from Richard Lawson, who was able to get up the inside of the former champion. And Nichols just couldn't quite hang on to it and didn't have the speed to hang around in second place. Really good action for second and third, with Lawson coming out on top. As you rightly say, Chris Harris out in front. We'll have, have to be patient now to see if nine points will be enough for the semi-finals with Lawson on nine points as well. You can see how much it meant to him. If only he could have done that a little bit earlier on, and then he would be comfortably into the top six. But uh, nonetheless, that was an impressive ride from Chris Harris. Yes, so clarification, Richard Lawson nine. Kelvin was right, I was wrong. <laughs> Again, Scott Nichols 10. Garrity's meeting will be over on three. So let's just confirm for you then. Craig Cook on 11. Scott Nichols now on 10 from five. Chris Harris and Richard Lawson on nine points apiece. The riders in orange in the graphics, they're the riders that would currently go into the semi-final. The top two straight through to the grand final. That's how it works. And then it's all about the grand final to decide the British champion and the wild card for Cardiff at the Principality Stadium in the FIM British Speedway Grand Prix on July the 22nd. Brilliant lineup here. We got riders in top form. Warren the winner last time out. Lewis Kerr a winner last time out. So was Rory Slime. And there's no doubt that Danny King a winner last time out will be very keen to continue on. This is one, quite possibly the most competitive race of the night so far with heat winners right across the starting line. Fantastic opportunity for um, uh, Danny King once again to get back in it, but Rory Slyne has looked very accomplished so far this evening. Yep, Steve Worrell, eight points with that scaphoid injury, of course. So uh, he needs a couple of points here, you feel. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, these, these, these riders, certainly Worrell could push one of the riders out, either Lawson or Harris on nine points if he wins. Yeah, lots of permutations coming up. Really quite an interesting uh, scenario we've got here. An immensely competitive race this. This is going to be some race now. Yep, here we go then. Heat number 18 it is. Danny 
Made a good start from two, but what about that from Steve Worrell? Super start from Worrell. And now Danny King in second place, but Steve Worrell is kicking on and pulling clear here. This will do Steve Worrell nicely. Danny King is in second spot. Third is Lewis Kerr. And Rory Slime on the back of his three straight wins is currently at the back, but they're all grouping up. And Slime isn't out of it yet. Look at this from Kerr. Oh, brilliant action for second, third, and fourth. Worrell is riding once again out of his skin in front. He's pulled away from a tremendous. Slime couldn't get out of gate four and look for the cutback, but the door was slammed shut because Lewis Kerr was already there. Slime is working overtime out the back, but can't land a blow right now. We've got to say that Steve Wall is riding through three he went out in front. Slime now finally coming through into third place. That point may be absolutely crucial. Yes, absolutely. Every point is critical here. Stevie Worrell is on his way to victory in heat number 18. Second place for Danny King and third for Rory Schlein. More he drama. That. He it, did indeed. He big, needed, big result. Really did indeed deep to get that third place. Probably hasn't had to ride too much harder just for a solitary point. But in the grand scheme of things, it could be very useful indeed. Steve Worrell, what a way to bounce back after dropping out and failing to score in his third ride. Cloud on their feet here. Home favourite, of course. Looking good. Back-to-back -back wins in fourth and fifth outings. Superb ride out in front. Once again, showing great speed. Great Tell stuff. What, Lewis Kerr's ridden better than his points suggest as well. He's mm. got five, and he deserves more than that. Steve Worrell, three points. Danny King, two. And Rory Schlein won, and by my reckoning now, Danny King is on 10, Rory Schlein's on 10, Scott Nichols is on 10, <laughs> and Stevie Waddle's on 11. Brilliant stuff from Worrell, he won't have to worry about a countback, that's for sure, because he was superb out in front here. Look at the speed he had, great action for second and third, and Rory Schlein rides so well, and had to, because he was out the back for some considerable time couldn't get out of gate four, just couldn't make it stick. Lewis Kerr, as you rightly said, has ridden his socks off tonight for not enough reward. That man, though, well and truly into the semi-finals now, looking like a potential winner, dare I say. Yes, George English there, the uh, Newcastle promoter and team manager in his pick corner. And this uh, now, with two heats to go at the qualifiers, is how it stands. Worrell on 11. Cook on 11. So as things stand, Ben Barker, Richie Worrell can catch Stevie Worrell on 11. There's two heats to go. Barker, Robson, Richie Worrell and Howarth in this one. This will be the last outing of the evening for Stuart Robson and Kyle Howarth. Ben Barker has well, really been in the mix, it. hasn't he? Yeah. He's not out of it. And the way he rode last time, I mean, you can't rule him out. He's got the inside gate. And I tell you, he's not a shy man on a motorbike. He will put himself about and he will do everything he possibly can to make sure he stays involved in this meeting. Really is building up beautifully now. Riders really having to put themselves on the line. And Worrell and Bark here on eight points have got everything to race for. They have indeed. It's Ben Barker off one, then it's Stuart Robson off gate number two, Richie Worrell gate number three, Kyle Howarth off the outside. A reminder, Danish Grand Prix Saturday in uh, Horsens live with us and next Monday back in the Premiership for the first time this season Paul Pirates, Bellevue Aces and if you want to go along to Wimborne Road next Monday night, get along there and under 11s will be admitted free of charge, it'd be great to see a packed house at Wimborne Road next Monday as it will on our tour of the Premiership Speedway tracks over the next few weeks, it would be great to see packed stadium for our visits there, look forward to you joining us Heat number 19 now here, an ultimate race of the qualifiers. The stakes are high, here we go. They turn up very quickly. Ben Barker is in the mix there in red. He looked across there, and the man in white, Richie Worrell, is alongside him. And Whoa. Barker's gone too wide. Barker lost control momentarily there. And now Richie Worrell has the lead, and Barker is in serious danger of missing out. It's Richie Worrell with the lead, but Barker's come through into second. And Barker will go to the fence. Barker goes wide. Here comes Richie Worrell. Oh, not quite enough room. Ben Barker slams the door down the back straight. Superstar from Barker off the inside. Second place, but look at Barker go! He is fabulous!
runners out in front. They're all falling over each other for second, third, and four. But wow, Ben Barker won his opening ride from the inside gate. Looks like he's going to finish with a win from the inside gate. Terrific effort. Yeah, and Howarth battling away as well. Stuart Robson's come through into blue. Yeah. Richie Warrell in white just hasn't had the speed tonight. But let's pay credit to Ben Barker of Red Cup Airs. What a performance tonight for Barker. He would have made several promoters sit up and take notice tonight, I'm sure. He only came in as a replacement, an injury replacement for Lewis Bridger on Wednesday or Thursday of last week. It was a late call-up. And well, how he has grabbed his opportunity with both hands, Kelvin. Yeah, absolutely. He moves on to 11 points. And he has put in some really strong performances here this evening. And that one was right out of the top drawer. Terrific reaction from this big crowd here. Great atmosphere here. Down the start and finish straight. And Ben Barker delighting the fans with an outstanding ride in Heat 19. 11 points for Ben Barker. Stuart Robson second. Richie Worrell uh, was third in that one and that's nine points for Richie Worrell now but Ben Barker start of the night I had a quick chat with him how are you feeling about it he said I'm just gonna come here and give it a good go I said, to him, job. He said to me I said to him how are you feeling he said I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> I said then you were born ready look at that clouts the fence down the back straight on the opening lap that allows Worrell through let's watch it again just lifts there runs a little wide bounces off the kickball south way down the back straight but that does not deter him whatsoever Worrell out in front just lacking a touch of speed leaves the door wide open and here comes Barker charging up the inside up the bank and just has enough speed slams the door shut down the back straight second time of asking that was some ride from Barker can't quite believe it and 11 points uh, we're gonna see him again well we will yeah he's uh, he's done a great job Ben Barker congratulations to him um, now coming up here heat number 20 I can tell you Andy Mellish comes in in yellow, but just a reminder of the standings as they are right now. And uh, Lewis Rose on, four, on uh, four points there. It does now seem as though the top six are pretty much clear cut. We know the six riders that are going to go forward. This race, Andy Mellish will go off gate four. Now, Andy is a rider who rides for the Bellevue Colts, which is the third division of British Speedway, it's the National League. And um, initially, um, it was going to be Dan Bewley and Jack Smith, but then when you look at Dan Bewley's average riding for his um, all three divisions really, his premiership club with Bellevue, his championship club with Glasgow, he was deemed too good a rider to be a track reserve tonight. Pretty so, <laughs> hard to argue with that, so Andy Mellish gets his chance, and Andy Mellish is... Um, the invisible man off gate four. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a, I can, a I can moment of his you, career. He's out there because I can see him. <laughs> yes. He, this is the moment of Andy Mellish's career, let me tell you, because he's a, a young rider and uh, what a big moment. But great Cook then off gate number two in the blue helmet colour. What can Cook do here? We know that he's going to be in the. Closing stages of tonight's action, but can he lay a marker down off gate number two? Here they go, heat number 20. Rose was rolling in the start there, but the referee has allowed the race to go on, oh. and Cook's gone square in that first turn. He's gone wide and charging through. It's stark in white now. Cook has been lifted to third place. Rose now, oh. but it's just going to be passed by Ward by Craig Cook. Steady on Cookie. Oh. Here he comes. Third to first, and the Bellevue hero has done it again. Fantastic opening lap of Speedway there. Cook was all out of control as he entered the first corner. But by crikey, did he put it on the line coming round turns three and four? It's just up to the front. Stark is having a really good ride in second place. Once again, this track throwing up. Fabulous action. The action, look at this now. Stark back up the inside. Superb action for second place. Cook out in front. Just uh, but he needs to pull away. Great cook riding beautifully here. I don't think he was too happy at the start. Lewis Rose definitely uh, moving at the start line there. But oh. Cook is going to take the victory, and this is a real battle for second spot. Paul Stark in white, Lewis Rose in red. But Cook wins the race. And Craig Cook, well, has dropped just one point in five outings. Straight wow. through to the grand final, no problem. And still many people's favourite for the title tonight.
That's mine. Surely has to be. He's mine, and uh, he's bounced back nicely there, but it will be no easy task. We're seeing some terrifically strong performances from several riders. Great racing for second and third there. Cook will take all the plaudits. Look at the reaction. The home rider delighting the fans once again. One big race to come for Cook. Can he win his first championship? He's through to the final. Yep, so congratulations to Craig Cook. Terrific uh, performance. He's done well this season uh, for Bellevue Aces, the Workington Comets, and uh, on an individual basis as well. That first lap, Nigel, around the outside cool. in turns three and four was a breathtaking move from him. Great racing for second, third, second and third throughout the four laps. We'll see it again here. He loses his control there, just lifted at the wrong time and dragged him far too wide. But look at the throttle control and the... Uh, Bike skills there, he's able to gather himself. He's uh, right back into the race. Lewis Rose and Paul Stark here ride really strongly and it's a very competitive battle for second place. And look at this move now, that is something special there from Cook. He was desperate to get to the front and uh, railing around in the grip on the outside was uh, really very special indeed. Super stuff from him. And a great speedway race once again. We've been royally entertained. It really has been superb stuff. And these two boys uh, racing for the minor placings, they put on a great show. But that man, he is comfortably through to the final tonight. Can he win it? That's the big question now. Yeah, well, still our referee Jim McGregor waiting for the verdict of uh, second and third. But the fans delighted with that. Great Cook, we know the winner and finishes on 14 points tonight. Cookie, I thought Stark got third. Or second. Excuse me, second. I thought the Rose was on the inside was third, so can't really tell from there properly. No, we? behind. You need the when you're um, looking across the track. But um, so the uh, fans will await the verdict now on the uh, lineup for the semi-final and the grand final. Here's the uh, angle we need to see. Jim McGregor's watching this, but Star looks you know, as though Stark, he's got second comfortably. Stark got it quite easily, yeah. Yep. I wrote it down straight away, but there we are. Um, uh, referee Jim McGregor just making sure. Stark and Rose doing great work in second and third. Here we see the result now. Yes, so uh, confirmation then. Uh, a win in heat number 20 for Craig Cook. Second place was uh, Paul Stark, Lewis Rose third, Andy Mellish at the back as a replacement for Jason Garrity. It means that Craig Cook goes straight through to the final. 14 points. We have two races to go in this British final. We have the uh, semi-final, the race off, and then we have the grand final itself. So um, the standings, this is the important graphic that you need to see right now. Steve Worrell and Craig Cook are straight through to the final. Worrell on countback, and then the semi-final will be Ben Barker, Rory Schlein, Danny King, and Scott Nichols. The race for the British title has gone from 16 down to six riders. Back to the pits here in Manchester, where home favourite Craig Cook has already booked his place in the final with 14 points. His Bellevue teammate Steve Worrell also in the final. Steve Brandon, though, is with the semi-finalists. They're all lined up or lining up behind me, but I'll just run through the semi-final. So Ben Barker had first pick. He's taking gate one in red. Rory Slyne has taken gate two in blue. Danny King will go out of gate four in yellow. And last but no, by no means least with choice was Scott Nichols. He's going in gate three in white. Nigel Kelvin, your call on the semi-final. Tough one to call this one now with a reminder that straight through to the final are Craig Cook and Steve Worrell. Worrell going through yeah. on the amount of race wins that he had, so it was count back. But Kelvin, I know you might perhaps be tending towards a bit of a shock here tonight. Well, the way that Barker has ridden in his last couple of rides, it wouldn't surprise me at all that he makes the final. And uh, he's uh, a rider that's not shy. I said that early on. He'll put himself about, and he's shown great tenacity and speed. Um, whether he'll just uh, get a little bit too much for him, I don't know. But uh, he's ridden awfully well to get this point. Champion, of course, has worked hard as well. Danny King, the reigning champion. He will go from gate four. Not ideal. Wouldn't have wanted that. He would have wanted possibly an inside gate. And Nichols just has lost a little bit of momentum in his last couple of rides, but you can never rule him out. Maybe a couple of tweaks to the equipment. Track has gone a little bit slicker now. We'll be interesting to see after the track grading whether they chase the dirt or whether the shorter run round the inside will be preferable. 
and uh, the stealth like Australian here, Schlein coming out of gate two. Could it be his night? He's ridden very well and he rode supremely well to get that, that, that 10 points last time. He really did need that. Yeah, track's been good as you say, Kelvin, and uh, hats off to the Bellevue track staff. Andy yeah. Meredith Brilliant. and his team here. Brilliant job. Who have uh, done a, a good job. Uh, again, some good racing here tonight at this National Speedway Stadium. Ben Barker off the inside, Rory Schlein off gate two, Scott Nichols off gate three, and Danny King off the outside in yellow. Uh, this is all about the first two. So the battle for the British Championship is from 16 down to six riders now, but after this heat, it will be down to four riders. This will be tense on the start line, Kel. It will be, but there's one rider on the line that's really got nothing to lose, and that is Ben Barker. Danny King, of course, the reigning champion, reigning champion has everything to lose. And uh, his championship is right on the line now. He needs to make the first two here. Right. His debut British final. Looking like he has a, an outstanding chance of making the final. Here we go. Great start from side off two, but Barker's there. Ben Barker has hit the front superbly. Schlein has gone so wide, and it's all very tight down oh. the back straight. Charging hard through is Danny oh. King. Oh, and now in blue, battling away as well as Schlein. Oh, they're all bunching up here. They're throwing the bikes at each other. This is sensational here. Rory Schlein now round the inside, gets himself back into second place. King into third, Nichols is out the back, but the man in front, Ben Barker, he's out in front, they're queuing up behind him. Flying out in front, Schlein now using the inside run. Is that going to pay dividends? But Ben Barker's out in front, Nigel, and he's looking quick. Ben Barker is on his way to the final of the British Championship, and he didn't even qualify to get here. Barker into the last lap. Rory Schlein, the Australian ball is in second spot he's on his British final debut and it is going to be Ben Barker and Scott Nichols in the final or Rory Schlein in the final Barker and Schlein Nichols and King miss out so Danny King's year as British champion is over he will not defend the title tonight but what a story for Ben Barker he can't believe it could we see a shock British champion tonight the man didn't even qualify to get here. It's Barker and it's Schlein who go through to the final. What a ride from Ben Barker off that inside gate. He won his last ride in the first 20 heats from there. And by crikey, he rode the socks off that motorbike to make it through to the final. Fabulous effort from him. Schlein, what a race that was going on behind him. They were changing places every corner. King, Nichols and Schlein really going at it. Fabulous speedway for second and third and fourth and the Aussie man comes through into second place and makes the final on the night I don't know could it be Barker's night well 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 Ben Barker Rory Schlein they're through to the final of the British Championship tonight Scott Nichols and Danny King are out Scott Nichols fans getting a little bit excited in that last lap when I said he was going through yeah it was of course Rory Schlein <laughs> brilliant stuff Barker off that inside gate and he makes the right decision on the first corner hugs the curb and makes that first corner his and he charges down the back straight look at the traffic for Schlein Schlein looking for a way through then somehow he switches to the inside fantastic move there to get himself initially into second place but then King responds King and Nichols respond and they swap places on several occasions throughout the four laps the only place that doesn't change is Barker he hangs on out in front for all the four laps fabulous semi-final really living up to the hype here this evening the racing out of the top draw and Ben Barker wins in style we now know our four finalists here at the National Speedway Stadium. Huge crowd, great to see. And let's build up to the final. Here's Natalie. And what a final we've got in prospect. And we know that we'll have a new British champion. We've got Craig Cook, Steve Worrell, Ben Barker and Rory Schlein in the final coming up. We've also got more two-wheeled action coming up this weekend. In the Welcome back to Manchester. We've got Heat 22 coming up for you, and it is the most important one. It is the final of the British final, and Steve Brandon is with the four riders, isn't it? I am indeed, Natalie. I'm going to step forward and ask Craig Cook, who's got first pick, the $64,000 question. Craig, which gate are you having in the final, sir? Number one, please. So, gate red for you. I'll let you go and get your helmet, get bike prepared, ready. Stevie Warrell, what are you going to have, sir? Uh, it's got to be gate two. Gate two, blue for you. Off you go, sir. Ben Barker just won the semi-final. Had a look at the track. You're going to go gate three. Three for Joshua. 
Gate three in white. Thank you very much. Rory Sline, last choice, but you're in the final with a chance of winning it. You're going to have gate four in yellow. Good luck for you, sir. Cheers, mate. Thank you. So those are our four finalists. There will be a new British champion, of course. Outgoing British champion is Danny King. Commiserations, Danny. I know, well, I heard how disappointed you were after that. So that was a tough semi-final. Yeah, it was. Uh, it just hasn't been my night, you know, but I managed to scrape into the semi. And, um, yeah, I didn't have much to do off gate four, really. I couldn't quite get across and had to pull a bit of a, a manoeuvre down the back straight and it meant I'd come in narrow to pass everyone. But, of course, then when I had to turn, they all passed me back and... Seemed to be a lot. I was stuck in traffic for the whole race, but I battled hard. It's, it's just hard to take at the minute. I know you were determined to ride tonight and defend the title, mm. of course. I know you've been struggling, though, with, with an injury. Has that hampered you at all this evening? It didn't look like it had. No, no. It's, um, it's not, not on track at all. It's sore, uh, don't get me wrong, but um, it doesn't, I don't notice it on track, and that's the main thing. Enjoy, it's a track that you enjoy racing on, isn't it, Mitchell? It is. It's just great racing track. I'm sure you can see that tonight. There's riders swapping and changing, and to me, that's what Speedway's all about. But as I say, it's just a little bit hard for me at the minute, a bit disappointed, but we'll have to look on to next year. I know you're disappointed, but you know the four finalists. Who would you say is looking favourite for the final? No idea. Um, <laughs> you, you can't look past Cookie. He's been quick all night. He knows his track inside out, but as we've seen, he's been beaten already tonight. So I don't know. I don't know. Probably if Craig can get in front, I'm sure he'll take some passing. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be exciting. Danny, we really appreciate you talking to us. No Danny problem. King there. Yes, Let's get to the final then and talking you through it, Calvin Tatum and Nigel Pearson. Yeah, still awaiting the riders here, but um, some work going on with um, Chris Harris there. Is he uh, offering the back tyre, I wonder, for uh, Ben Barker? As uh, they are fellow Cornishmen, of course. Uh, Chris and Ben do, do know each other very well. But I would suggest that very soon the two-minute time allowance is going to have to come on for this grand final. It's I'm not on yet. Uh, quite clearly, the Harris camp have sort of decamped into the Barker camp here. <laughs> um, all hands to the pump. And uh, just a swap of rear wheels, so he's got a fresh tyre in there for the final. Yep, so uh, pretty frantic down in the uh, pits. But uh, we're just awaiting the, uh, the full riders now. Uh, let's find out what is it exactly happening down in the pits. Steve Brandon. Yeah, just a quick update on what happened tonight. All the riders in tonight's meeting in the 1-16 to field had two tyres, which meant they could use four edges. Um, ben Barker and Chris Harris, great mates from Truer and Cornwall, decided that uh, Chris's tyre might have been better, and they've just tried to see if they can uh, use a, a third tyre for Ben. They can't. They're changing it back now, and we'll be underway very shortly. Kelvin, at this level of speedway, you try and get an advantage any way you can, but they uh, they got caught out. <laughs> it's a bit cheeky, that. <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, trying to use the third tyre on the night. It is quite hard on tyres here. The actual base of the track is quite abrasive, so it will tear away at the tyre. And at this stage, you're looking for any advantage you can possibly get. And so Ben Barker is now back on his original tyre, which is right and proper, so few eagle-eyed people in the pits. Riders now emerging out onto track. Cook coming out of the inside gate, and I think that's probably right. If I was in his situation, um, I would have taken the inside gate. Worrell, I think, is also a threat here. He's, uh, he's bounced back uh, very nicely after failing to score in his third ride, and there's no doubt that he's got the pace to, to win it. This is all about belief now. Who believes they can win the champion? Ship. It's going to be a new British champion, whatever. Uh, none of these riders have won it before. So it's exciting times for all of them. Uh, Cook has been red hot favourite all night and leading up to this meeting. That is no small task, I can assure you. I've had that pressure riding at Coventry, riding in the British champion, uh, British championship as a home rider. I tell you, it's quite a stressful build up to the meeting, no doubt about that. But Cook has ridden superbly well tonight. All balls down to this one race, the grand final of the 2017 British Championship final. Huge race coming up, not just the national title, but a wild card place for the FIM British Speedway Grand Prix at Cardiff's Principality Stadium on the 22nd of July is on the line. Cook, Waddell, Barker and Schlein. Barker, we remind you, off gate three, was only a late replacement for the injured Lewis Bridger. Stevie Waddell and Craig Cook off the inside two gates are Bellevue home riders. Cook off the inside in red, winner of the Grand Prix qualifying semi-final in Italy at the weekend. Stevie Waddell, gate two in blue. Gate three is Ben Barker in white. He's been in finals before. Rory Schlein in his first ever British Championship. He goes off the outside in yellow. Yeah. Well, it's his tenth time, Nigel, no doubt about that. 
Riders warming their tyres up, desperately trying to gain any advances they possibly can. Ben Barker's almost melted his tyre. He's been spinning it up that much. He really is digging around on gate three, desperately trying to find a spot to start from. Cook, pretty calm on the inside. His teammate, Warrell, alongside him in gate two. Will it be Schlein's night? That really would be a big story if Schlein comes through to win the British title tonight. Fabulous night of Speedway. A credit to British Speedway here this evening. It's been a lot of, really has been a privilege to be here. Here we go. It's the grand final of the British Championship. Green lights on. And Barker's made a good start from three, but Stevie Worrell's there in blue. Cook hasn't made the start. It's a battle of the Bellevue boys. Down the back oh. straight. Oh, Cook had to slide the bike to avoid hitting Steve Worrell. Here comes Ben. Second as wild card for the British FIM Speedway Grand Prix. It's many, many congratulations to Craig Cook. What an art of speedway that has been, and in particular, it is a fabulous achievement for Craig Cook. He's in the form of his life. One on Saturday in Tavanzano in Italy flies back to the UK and wins the British Championship for the first time in front of his home fans. He's been a red-hot favourite for this meeting. That in itself brings a huge amount of pressure and he has responded and ridden brilliantly. He had to work his socks off in that final because his teammate Steve Worrell made a sensational start from gate two and made Cook work very hard. Been a great night of speedway. Barco, crikey, I don't know what he was doing in the final. He was riding very wide, but that man and the home crowd clearly absolutely delighted. And that is a really special moment for Craig Cook. And who knows, he could really be kicking on and as a wild card in Cardiff, he will be a spoiler. Yeah, a celebratory moment for the Cumbrian camp as well. Craig's dad's there, Tony Jackson, the Workington hey. team manager, lifelong hey. Workington fan. He's been named Great Britain captain for the Monster LG FIM Speedway World Cup last week. He's not been a bad week, named Great Britain captain, won his Grand Prix qualifier in Italy. He's won the British title. He's had worse weeks, hasn't he? He may have done, yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. We saw him in the winter, Nigel, when we went up to Workington. He wasn't sure quite what was going on. He had had a very, with all the controversy over this track in particular, he wasn't sure what was going to go on. Mark Lemon there congratulating his team manager, must be delighted as well but that really has been an outstanding performance from Craig Cook almost a performance he's coming of age he's a late bloomer he's 30 years of age but he has ridden his socks off tonight and Cook. fully deserves to win Cook Warrell Schlein Barker and what a final it was here we see it again Kelv yeah fantastic race absolutely supreme start from Warrell and when I saw that I thought the name on the trophy was Warrell's but Cook wouldn't be denied here this evening. He rides absolutely brilliantly in second place, waits for his opportunity, and once the door opened, he pounced and got up the inside of his teammate, Worrell. Worrell, who had actually been hired on earlier on in the evening, he just could not respond to Cook's pace out in front. Ben Barker roaring around the outside, just couldn't quite make it. He's ridden supremely well to get himself into the final. And Rory Schlein from the outside gate, just couldn't quite get there but this night belongs to cook cook who had only dropped one point all night long has been exceptional it's a fantastic achievement from craig cook he will go to cardiff he will be rubbing shoulders with ty woffenden with greg hancock the reigning world speedway champion 
That's where he will be on July the 22nd at the Principality Stadium. What a night here. Now let's hear from Natalie. Welcome back to the National Speedway Stadium where Cray Cook has just raced his way to his first British title. He's speaking to Steve Brandon. The race jacket says it all. The 2017 Integro British Speedway champion Craig Cook. You must feel pretty good, sir. What a day to be alive, mate. I, wanna, I can't express the excitement going through me right now. You know, I've worked so hard to get this. Um, you know, it so, fell so short for so many years. Uh, been with Vital for the past five years. So, yeah, to win it, you know, it's, um, it's awesome. But... Yeah, it'd have been nice to beat Wolfie, but uh, yeah, uh, obviously he's not he's not took part this year. But um, yeah, what a massive achievement, and uh, get to go to Cardiff and like I said before, put the cat among the pigeons. So, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here for uh, if it wasn't for my family, family, friends, sponsors. You know, Van Derek, thank you very much. All my sponsors, all the supporters, everyone that supports me. I just can't thank you enough because you know this is what. I, I've achieved what I have today because of all of you, so thank you very much. I mean, you mentioned the crowd. To, to, to win the British final is very special, but to win it here on your home track in front of the fans that have supported you through thick and thin, giving you a lot to your career. You only have to look at the crowd, mate, and see how good, good these fans are. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've made, no, made, made no secret of it that, I, you know, that I don't uh, want to leave this club for a very long time. Uh, I want to do at least 10 years in a row. And... Um, there's very few riders that uh, uh, do that long with one single club, so uh, I'm very loyal to this club, as this club are very loyal to me, and I can't thank them. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for everything. I can see it means an awful lot. Huge congratulations. Podium coming up. Natalie and Kelvin, discuss. Well, congratulations once again. We just heard from Craig up there and just how passionate he is about this title, about doing it in front of his, of his home crowd. He's finished second three years in a row. He said to me earlier in the pits, he has to do it tonight. And he was the favourite going into it. Yeah, and that brings pressure itself, you know, and he's responded supremely well to that. I've actually been in that situation when the British final was held at Coventry and I rode for Coventry and everybody just expected you to do it and you know that you could feel the pressure of sort of coming and nearer the meeting came you really did have to come to terms with that and I think he's he's dealt with that very well and he's ridden ridden out of the top draw tonight. What a year what a season it's turning out to be for Craig Cook isn't it this could oh. be his year you've seen in his career kind of go on the incline now. Yeah I think he's come of age this season you know he's a late bloomer he's 30 years of age uh, he chose to come to Speedway a little bit late he was a motocross rider prior to that and there's no doubt that uh, it looks like he may have made the right decision because <laughs> uh, as you rightly say this week uh, is probably one of the better weeks he's had. Absolutely uh, and to the other to the finalists as well great race from Ben Barker and, and from Rory Schlein as well. Well Ben Barker was quite a shock wasn't he you know he didn't even qualify for the meeting but uh, made his way through to the final was very entertaining Rory Schlein sort of slipped in there very calmly and coolly he did a great job got a feel for Danny King never easy when you had to relinquish the title but um, nonetheless he put up a spirited effort but uh, no it's been I tell you what it's been a fantastic speedway meeting uh, Stevie Wall great in the final as well of course and they are ready to receive uh, the medals and Craig Cook ready to receive the trophy here's Nigel Pearson Craig Cook just taking to the podium and about to receive the British Championship trophy Steve Worrell there and Rory Schlein. And Craig Cook is the new British Speedway champion. Many congratulations to him. You can see what it means to him. He's the new Great Britain captain for the forthcoming World Cup as well. He's won his Grand Prix qualifier at the weekend and he's come to his home premiership track in Britain, Bellevue, and wins. Home fans delighted, as you would expect. Uh, Stevie Worrell and uh, Rory Schlein 
second and third, but here comes the race jacket for Cardiff. Torben Olsen, the managing director of BSI Speedway, hands over the wild card race jacket. That's for Cardiff. That is for Saturday, July the 22nd, at the Principality Stadium. Craig Cook will be rubbing shoulders with the world's very best speedway riders in the British Grand Prix. He's going to try it on for size as well. Why not as well? Might as well get used to it for July the 22nd. So we will see Craig Cook. You can see that meeting live with us, but of course I think the whole of British Speedway uh, ventures down to Cardiff every year. Such a wonderful venue, right in the heart of the city. And the celebrations begin. Stevie Worrell thought he might have had it in the bag early on. Rory Schlein gets a bronze medal in his British final debut as well. But for Craig Cook, it's celebration time for the Bellevue rider. Means a lot to him. And he can now, for the next 12 months at least, say, I am British champion. Many congratulations then to Craig Cook, the 2017 British Speedway champion. Thank you very much, Nigel. A very proud moment there for Craig Cook, as you can see on the top of the podium. He's waited a few years to get there, and he came very close on the last three occasions, of course. Uh, Kelvin's still alongside me in the pits as we watch the celebrations and the, the photographs taking place on the centre green. Uh, and as I say, proud moment. He, he's been at Cardiff before, Craig Cook. He's ridden there already. It was the title, like we said right at the start, that will mean so much to him tonight. Absolutely, you know, that's an added bonus to Wildcard, of course. He's, uh, he's delighted, of course, to have the opportunity to race, probably in the biggest speedway meeting in the world uh, at the, towards the end of next month. But, uh, you know, he, he, he has had to work so hard because three times second place, that could begin to wear on you, you know, and maybe some of the belief may just begin to slip away. But uh, it certainly didn't tonight. Just dropped one point, made some big calls during the evening as well. They changed bikes, they made some uh, changes to their setup. And uh, to all intents and purposes, they made the right calls at the right time. What does that say about his confidence? Because he said to me, yeah, the bike that I'm normally riding, I'm just not getting the speed from it. The bike I rode all last year, I wasn't getting the speed from it. But he's, he's willing to make those changes and, and uh, under pressure as well. Yes, and that's a sign of maturity. I think the weather played a huge part in bike setup tonight. Ordinarily, it isn't 30 degrees in Manchester when you ride in the evening. So therefore, you know, the way the bike ran quite clearly didn't suit his normal choice. He then had, you know, they then took the chance to change the equipment and quite clearly that paid massive dividends because he then had the speed that was required. But he didn't do it all from the front, Natalie. He had to work really hard. For the first lap in that final, he must have been thinking not again because Stevie Worrell rode him a good final Absolutely. race. Absolutely, and Worrell has ridden out of his skin considering he comes in with a skateboard injury. You know, he can be immensely proud of uh, his second place. Uh, Mark Lemon will surely be very pleased as well, having two Bellevue riders, one and two. It's a great night for Bellevue Speedway because Rory Schlein has been a Bellevue rider previously, so effectively they've got first three here that have represented the club. And the two riders in first and second place now clearly love this new track. And as I said in commentary, the, the speedway we've witnessed here this evening is a credit to the sport, and this new stadium really is beginning to find its feet. And major events here really just come, you know, you see some breathtaking action. Uh, for Cardiff, for, for, for Craig Cook as well, could be a real taster for what hopefully is to come for him if he goes through in the Grand Prix Challenge later on this year in August for the 2018 series. Yeah, I'll be brutally honest. I've questioned whether he had had, has really got it. I, I, you know, he's said that he wants to be world champion. It's easy to say, not quite so easy to do. Um, he looks like he's really beginning to understand what it's all about. This week is possibly a real turning point in his career and a big performance in Cardiff and the World Cup, who knows, he could well be a Grand Prix rider of the future. And as you say, he's showing great maturity because he's been given a lot of responsibility this year, the team mm. captain of Bellevue at Workington as well, and also the team captain with a big few events coming up with the World Cup. So quite clearly, it's helping him. You know, there's no doubt that the added responsibility leading his uh, domestic team, he's going to lead his country in the World Cup um, in Kings Lynn on July the 1st. I'm sure he'll be immensely proud about that. I don't think he's thinking about that too much right now. I think he's just uh, excited to be enjoying the moment of winning British champion. And uh, from personal experience, it's a special feeling. He'll wake up tomorrow with a spring in his step. That's for Overall, sure. it's a British final tonight. What did you make of the racing? I thought it was uh, outstanding. I, th I was concerned about the weather we've had. I think sometimes the track can go very dry and hard and a bit that dusty. can and a bit dusty and that can undermine the racing. But uh, all credit to the staff here. They've done an excellent job. And this track never fails to deliver, so it's been an outstanding meeting. Who do you think was the dark horse tonight? Well, 
Ben Barker, you know, he came from nowhere. I thought, you know, I said to Nigel, I thought that he might be a problem in the semi-final because he had that inside gate, and he certainly is not shy. He got involved, um, but gate three just proved too much for him in the final. And I think the right man won. What would you be thinking if you were Alan Rossiter right now? He's obviously named his squad for, for Team GB. He'll be delighted, obviously, for, for Craig Cook, for Stevie Worrell. What do you think he's going to be thinking about now, looking through his, his team selection, knowing he's got to make a, a final decision pretty close, pretty shortly? Yeah, it won't be too much longer. I think he's quite comfortable, of course. It's given him tremendous confidence that he's picked the right man to lead the country. Uh, I think that Steve Worrell must have an outstanding chance of riding at Kings Lynn. I don't think Harris is completely out of the picture. He's had a maximum for his club at Kings Lynn and rides that track probably better than he rides here. So I'm sure Alan will think about that. Um, I like to know Danny King, Scott Nichols. We've also got Robert Lambert in, yeah, the, in the background as well, who wasn't here tonight. And I think he would have had something to say about the British Championship. Lambert is a home rider, and I feel he will be in the one to four. Will Richard Lawson be pleased with what he did? First couple of races, we, 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 like you said in commentary, he had or was perhaps feeling like he had a point to prove. I think he'd be disappointed in the end because he started like a house on fire and it looked like he was going to really do something quite significant here this evening. In the end, he just fell short and I think he'll be driving home feeling a little bit, um, feeling that it could have been so much more for him. Um, He's a rider that, that's got a lot of potential, but just hasn't quite delivered on the big stage so far. Tremendous at club level. Tremendous at club level. Well, here he comes, the new British champion for 2017, Craig Cook. Many congratulations. We'll give you a fist pump as well. There we go. <laughs> Fabulous effort. How, how, are you, how are you feeling? I mean, lifting finally. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it, Craig? Uh, yeah, it has been a long time coming, that. And, uh, you know, to do it uh, in that style, you know, I didn't, I didn't get it on a plate. So, um, yeah, to do it like that, you know, it feels awesome. You know, I had to add some speed. If anything, I, I made the bike a little bit flat. I was indecisive what to do there at the end. Uh, dropped a sprocket and, um, oh, oh, she's a bit flat out here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, sat on the back of the seat, twisted her on, and uh, the old PGR pulled me away. So, um, yeah, cheers, Johnsy. Um, Engie's working a treat, mate. I don't care what anyone says. No, it was a superb performance from you tonight, Craig. And you must have had times when you doubted whether you were ever going to win this championship because particularly a few years ago when you were leading the final at Monmouth Green over Ty Woffenden and they pulled it back and you just missed out. Did that ever go through your mind? <laughs> you betcha. I mean, uh, yeah, I was thinking, oh, you know, what's going to happen here? You know, and, and, you know, anything can happen. This is Speedway. And, sure. uh, Unfortunately, it worked out for me. You know, like, like you said, I had some bad luck in the past there, but you know, I did have I did have a chance to rectify it in the rerun, which I didn't. So I only got myself to blame for that, and um, you know, I can't take anything away from anybody. So, like, no one can take it away from me tonight. You know, I worked hard, extremely hard. You know, this is this is my life. Speedways comes first out of anything in my life. Uh, I love it, and. Um, I um, hope I'm still doing it at uh, Mr. Hancock's stage, you know, because, uh, you know, <clears throat> not only is it my job, but I thoroughly love doing it. What were you thinking, just talk us through the, the final, because what were you thinking in that first lap? Because you were, you said you had to work hard, and you did in the final, because Steve Worrell made you. Oh, I was fidgeting, uh, I was uh, spinning like one of them fidget spinners, wasn't I? So, yeah, I just, um, yeah, got a bit of drive there, and, uh, you know, like I said, she, she was quite flat, so it was pulling quite nice. Um, you know, I didn't know what Stevie was going to do, but, you know, Made a long straight of it there and just got the thing hooking on, on, on the slick. You know, like a, <clears throat> probably pulling a couple of teeth less than, than all the other guys, which makes it go real nice across the slick. So um, it's an impressive yeah. ride nonetheless, though, Craig, because uh, you know Steve they did make a superb start, and quite possibly if he'd ridden a little bit tighter, he would have made it a bit uh, more difficult for you. But uh, there's no doubt that the bike setup you had in the final gave you the impetus to get to the front yeah you know like steve is a trapper and uh, i was half half tempted to take gear two because you know i knew what he would do i knew he'd clamp me and uh, you know <coughs> so i didn't know what to do but i thought you know I've, this engine was, was spinning off the start heavily so um, i just didn't know what to do um, i took a gamble with the gate with a little bit more grip on it uh, it didn't work out but um, fortunately we, we got the setup and uh, we got the win we saw you try the race bib i mean you're already thinking ahead now to cardiff Cardiff, Togliatti, you know, there's, there's many big things coming up for me very shortly. So um, my team will, and I will be working extremely hard together. Um, and, you know, I want to be world champion. This, this is my dream and this is what I desire most in my life. So uh, 
to do this. Um, you know, I've got the right people behind me. You know, um, You're your father there, right next to you. Yeah, he's, <laughs> One of them. Uh, old Texas Will. You know, he's. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am uh, if it wasn't for him. You know, he's uh, he's been by my side for forever, and uh, you know, it means the world to me. And t you know, to do it for him, you know, because. Uh, Craig. We're gonna we're gonna have to wrap it up <laughs> no because uh, I mean I, I know you're gonna go and enjoy the celebration. Yeah, thank you to all my sponsors and everything. I can't thank Craig. you enough. Brilliant, to Craig. MotoGP this weekend. We're back on Saturday for the Speedway Grand Prix and back next Monday for the Premiership. Bye. Tyle one miasto w chmurach.